universe is telling me you don't need the computer. Maybe that's Just it. Just connect. This is not. Yeah. This is not. Why would we want to go to I anywhere mean, except? It would you? be fun to look up some stuff. No, we're going to. Okay. <laughs> I have to. And I, I was like, oh my gosh, we've never done that. I'm really. obsessed with uh, Celebrity Net Worth, the website. <laughs> I feel like they're always wrong, no, right? I, I'm obsessed. Well, maybe, but some someone like Daisy Fuentes. How much? <laughs> How much? Playing that game. How much? I'm going to say, God, Daisy Fuentes, I would say 16 mil. Based on? Like hearing her name a lot in the late 90s, early 2000s. Oh, yeah, because everyone in the 90s is financially super sound. No, I think she invested in some kind of like, I th- and I trust Daisy with her money. I think she's played it <laughs> smart. Like, I think that's why she, that's, she chose to step away because she was like, I made enough money and I wanted to get out. Uh huh. That's why we haven't heard her name in a while. Did, honestly, where the hell is Daisy Fuentes? Oh, I know all about where wait, Daisy wait, 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 How much is she worth? Am I even close? <laughs> I'm waiting for my computer to boot up. What do you think? I, I, well, I've Googled this many oh, times. Oh, damn it. I, this, what I, did you think? I am being, a, I was like, oh, she was an MTV VJ. I know what MTV pays. Not a lot, but back then, maybe it was a bigger deal and da da da. And then, like, a lot of people that were on TV in the 90s, if they didn't get a vitamin, get in on a That's vitamin. That's I'm saying. She got in on some kind of ab machine like a or a, <laughs> uh, like a, a, a box set of dancing and I'm, things I'm that. I'm so <laughs> obsessed. Like Eric Nice. Yes, yes. <laughs> like, but, there's some kind of, uh, yeah, 90s aerobic. Craze that she, she got in on. Yep. She, I'm obsessed with like the side hustles because we pretend right now oh, that like doing? actresses didn't always have side hustles. Like Gwyneth Paltrow having Goop, like Reese Witherspoon having Draper James, Jessica Alba having Honest. We're like, why all of a sudden are like actresses have to be like own companies? This always, always Suzanne have. Summers is one of the richest people on the planet. She right. was on a sitcom for, Master. for, she wasn't even the original fucking, oh, yes, she was. She was the original Chrissy on Three's Company. Okay. She started this huge empire of like staying young and the Thigh Master. Yeah. And she's got billions of dollars um daisy fuentes did get on an exercise uh thing with her own line of exercise clothes at kmart yes that's okay and Kohl's. Yes. yes that totally people think kathy sense. ireland she was this famous model that's it no there's a lot that, of money in kmart and Kohl's. and by the way yeah Kathy Ireland has all her money from her line of furniture most people might not even know about oh, yeah. at kmart Wow, and she I didn't, didn't know that. She didn't build them. Yeah. They said, can we give you a bunch of money to put your, put name, your name on, on this, this and, and you like sit on a couch. So, and we, you never even really hear about it's it. It's crazy. Ad, Adam Levine had a line of clothing for women, for women at Kmart. And it was so, it's just, to me, that is such a lie. I just remember thinking like, this is such bullshit. I hate when the celebrity actually doesn't use the thing. Like I believe Jennifer Aniston uses smart water. That's why I like drink smart water. I'm like, I bet she actually uses that. So no, Adam Levine. But the, why but women's clothing? But I'm because I'm like, because these girls are supposed to buy this clothing. Because like Adam Levine might like like me if I wear Kmart. He would spit on you, maybe. Like <laughs> like Adam Levine would never talk to someone who shops at Kmart. It is the most dishonest <laughs> thing I've ever heard. It's just wild to me. I want to trust people. You have a vein coming out in your forehead. I get angry I've about it. I've never seen you this upset. Uh, what? <laughs> I really am mad. The way about you it. did that was very Jed Aniston. And I was trying to do it. Oh, I, that I, was. What? Oh, I mean, I could really do it the whole time. I see myself sometimes, and I go, "You're just imitating her face sometimes to look prettier." It's it's, it's I used it's, to do it all the time. It's very charming though, because she is so good at being flustered or frustrated and so fucking charming about it. That's why she gets uh, to be her. Yeah. <laughs> why don't we do that more? Yeah, I like. I've been watching the morning show and studying her like faces as she, you know she's her, she's aging in a way that I'm like, oh, she's now matching my age, but she's like 20 years ahead. But it's like she's starting to look like me suddenly. Like it's like oh, okay, and so now my my. My forehead can do the same things, and I see the the wrinkles. I keep them now, and I, I'm fine with it. But I like in terms of endorsements, I'm not going to endorse something. And if I do, I'm not going to like say I use it. I don't lie. I, mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie mm-hmm. uh, for any amount of money. I don't think. And or I will literally, if, if if an alcohol company offers me enough money, I might start drinking again just to keep it honest and get the yeah. money. But like, I won't be like, I love this product and then I, not use I, it. I love White Claw so much, I relapsed for yes, it. Yes, <laughs> yes. That's how good of a product it is. Yes. I started getting DUIs again and it was worth it. I just want people to be more honest and I get so sad, especially like celebrities that I trust. I do this. I say, I'm like, I use grapeseed oil from Whole Foods as my main oil before bed. But I also am on fucking peptides. I also get to go get like like the fucking thing where they yeah. fry your face. You're I also, honest. I do all Thera, so I'm You're like, honest. 
I know, but it's like if if you just saw me doing a, a campaign with like oil of Valer or whatever, you should have there one. Should I be. mean, why have you? There's had to been skin makeup I'm companies. I'm not that, a liar. No, there have to be makeup companies and beauty companies that the problem want with your makeup face. stuff is a lot of it's tested on animals. And oh, I can't. See, I there can't. you go. Well, yeah. there's your honesty. You and, would not do. A, let me, but let me ask you: If you were didn't have money, and there was a big opportunity to promote it's something a tr- that it's yeah, a tricky, it's tricky situation because then you go you could do more good with your money because there's that's it so it's also okay there have been a couple campaigns that i came close to doing that are cruelty free but then you find out oh no because in china you cannot be cruelty free even if you're cruelty free here they still make you they like still make, poke a rabbit in the eye yep. even if it's like we yep. could just make this out of a piece of aloe they're like Correct. no you have to stab a rabbit because i've said because we're this is the way we do it i literally said i was gonna do a i really wanted to do a documentary where i said to all the companies that are testing on animals do it on me instead like i'll do it like you can do it on me put it in my eyes like i because there's you there's no real need to do it because we, we have to launch a like it, it's whitney cruelty free line <laughs> they, i'm gonna be worried that only emotionally been, cruel they just lock you in a cage like in those little red beady <laughs> eyes of like you in a cage like, <gasps> like you see the testing thing honestly, PETA, anytime it comes up i'm like Get out of here, Pete. I, I know too Being much. in a cage, shivering, shaking, scared is my kink. I mean, so I'm getting way more out of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Just poking spirit. me with sharp things in a cage oh is my sort God. of my dream. That's actually my <laughs> That's where mine's headed really soon. I don't give a really fuck soon. about animals. This is, I just so want to get in a cage. <laughs> I'm going to film me getting poked. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sacrificing myself for the good of animals. Oh, I'm sorry. That was just a specific kink I'm into. It's just my like, sexual fantasy that I've been working <laughs> towards. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so a lot of these places that are cruelty-free here, in order for them to be sold in China, which is where all the money gets made right has to be so then you're like oh fuck but yes if a brand that is uh not cruelty free is gonna give a bunch of money and i pass on it someone else is gonna say yes and they're probably not i could say yes and then donate all of it to beagle freedom project which fights cruelty you know what i'm saying yeah i mean uh yes i do know what you're saying and i think you should because a lot of people there's a lot of like things where it's like i'm just learning about like investing my money and stuff and like companies and then i'll go like well this company is like uh, allied with this company and they donate to this and they're like bad and like I shouldn't invest in them. It's like, no, I should fucking, because some asshole's gonna invest and do something evil with the money. Yep. I'm gonna fucking take the money and do something good with it. Well, that's what I Someone's feel about take jokes that might trigger people to have panic attacks about certain subjects that you might, in an audience of people, they might trigger, get triggered because you use the rape word or use, you talk about a subject that might send them into a fucking spiral. I get really nervous about that sometimes because I, I've seen it happen and I, I've seen a, a comic, I saw a girl have a panic attack and leave when I was in the hallway waiting to go on and like, and, and he got very defensive of like, I'm going to say what I want. And I'm like, but that girl's night is ruined. And we have to acknowledge By that. By the way, did a joke about Ray. Like, uh, I don't even know that it was like a, I don't remember the joke, but this person's a good enough comedian that he handles those subjects in a way that, I mean, I don't, it doesn't, for me, it didn't matter what the joke was as much as that could happen even if you're as delicate as you can with a joke. And it's like, that's not a joke making fun of rape victims. That's a joke about the subject. You could even just mention the subject of rape, mm-hmm. which is not a joke that could actually get you in trouble in terms of like you were punching down at rape victims. Mm-hmm. The word rape could trigger someone, you know, just mentioning it. Uh, Cut to I could say that rape- comic raped her. <laughs> and that was the situation. The, the, she was watching oh her my abuser God, joke about. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you so upset about? You bought a she ticket. She had a panic attack yet because her. Everyone else was excited when he dropped. <laughs> he in was the a, show. he was a pop in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I see this situation slightly different. No, I agree with you. I I know I like was so upset for her and like I was like fuck and I, it made me think about all the times I may have said a word that makes someone feel that way. But I argue that the things I talk look when I bring up that word I don't do it lightly. It's because I'm I'm not trying to make a rape joke so that I can make that girl feel weird and like everyone groans and like I'm edgy. It's because I have things to say about rape culture. Because I want, I want to talk about rape because and sexual abuse of any mm-hmm. kind. I'm doing this whole thing about molestation right now, and I, I it's very uncomfortable because I'm still navigating it. But it's has so much information that people don't have about yeah. child abuse, child sex abuse, and because I've done the research. Because for some reason, I'm kind of like fascinated by it because it's something that is in the shadows, obviously, mm-hmm. but it's in the shadows because. That's the way molesters want it to be. They want to live in a society where you can't talk about molestation mm-hmm. on stage. Because if you do, a victim goes, oh, you shouldn't say the rape word. You shouldn't say mo- talk about your molestation. Okay, there's more shame around it. Equals, when I molest someone, they won't tell as many people because you can't say it on stage. You can't make jokes about it. So I think talking about these things, I reason it, 
I'm putting information out there with my jokes. Joking that about is something more is not condoning it, and it is not no. perpetuating it. No child molester that never molested a kid saw you do a joke and go, oh my God, now I want to go, I'm going to pull the trigger now that she did that joke. Like, yep. to say that a comedian's joke about rape, about molestation, about... Or or that a, a woman on the cover of Vogue magazine is why young girls are anorexic. That is minimizing the disease and the act because you're saying a fucking comedian that everyone knows as a comedian is a silly goose and says silly things has the power to make someone molest a kid or rape someone. You're you're taking the accountability off the of person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but you're also uh, minimizing the person's. That, yeah, that it's up to me to to, to make no, monsters, not the, the person that did it. Monsters were monsters before they came in here, and they will behave whether you say it or not. But but one more thing about what yeah. you're saying is exactly right. Just to like back you up on Thanks. this in terms of the the molestation thing and pedophiles. So pedophiles. So alcohol. So. The engine of all addictive, abusive behaviors is going to be shame or some kind of trauma. So most or lying, or, not being honest, exactly, or being a psychopath, sociopath. That, but yeah, the li you lie because you feel shame about the truth. Yep. So it's yep. all like a shame engine, Just, right? We're yep. only as sick as, as the secrets we keep. So when um, most people that molest were molested. That's a fucked up thing to process and that doesn't excuse their behavior. But like understanding that this is a I cycle. I always think about that. I don't think anyone. I have. This is, this is, I want to address one thing. I didn't even consider that my joke might be like making it so that molesters feel more comfortable molesting. I might make more molesters. My fear with that joke and why I would worry about getting canceled is that I'm making victims who have already been victimized by those things re-triggered, which I will do. There's, and I'm going to tell no, you something right I now. Can't, it's a, a minefield. And you know what? I really will individually apologize to those people whose night was ruined because they went to go see a Nikki Glaser show and they didn't expect to hear about the word molestation. Their life was already ruined by some of them less than. I get it. But I will apologize to them for putting them in a situation. If, if some girl's crying and dry heaving yeah. in the bathroom, I will absolutely go talk to her and say, and, and listen to her and like understand it from her perspective. But I still, and maybe I'll shift my reasoning of like, this is doing more harm than good. I haven't found a way to, to synthesize this data or, I have and make it funny and palatable. The, or the people that have that reaction, which is, we'll, we'll talk, get to in a second, mm -hmm. because I have people that come up to me and they go, you made me laugh about for the first time ever. Yeah. I laughed about my rape. I laughed about my assault. I was able to like see that like you can go through something like that and eventually one day laugh about it. Like, thank you for showing me that's possible. Thank you for showing me that just because- And showing me that I'm not alone, just that because, it happened to someone yeah, else too. Just because, because by the way, everyone in the audience is going to have some kind of Someone's died of cancer. Someone's been hit by a car. Someone's an alcoholic. So, most people, and if you're audience, that's just a lot the of green room. Most people, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was I was very vigilant when I was a kid against kidnappers, any be, me, creepy men, and I think it's because something. I think I wouldn't if I was a betting woman. I would bet on. I got some things weird happened to me when I, well, someone wasn't watching with uh, when I was a baby and couldn't remember it because I had a fear of men and and I still do being alone with men that my mom's I always blame it on my mom's sex sex talk to me which was like if you're ever alone with a guy he'll rape you like that was literally her like don't be alone with men they'll rape you that didn't I don't remember that scaring me as much as just fearing feeling fear of men before that and let me I ask, don't know if let something me, I don't yeah. need to interject. Can we also involve ancestral trauma? Because y'all yes, know I love ancestral trauma. Sure. Because the fact that your mom said that to you, I'm Equals not saying I have something. No, I go, what happened to her? What happened to her? Or what was inherited? Because like these fears are also inherited. And I'm sorry, also women were getting forced to marry older guys at like 13. I mean, it on was TLC, like, yeah. I see it. Like it's <laughs> happened. I watch it. It's like still happening so often, but it was o the only way that your life was before. We are so fucking lucky to be in a world where we can even. You know, and by the way, this is also just America. A lot of this is already I know, still happening. We are happening. lucky right now, of course. Yeah, it's, it's and happening. I am all the going time. to because we have such an amazing relationship that I'm obsessed with. I'm going to be able to say to you, "Can you just not bang the table?" Because I don't want it to. You tell me that every time, and you can always tell me that. Every okay, time. and I just and never. Eat. I just don't want people to not hear what you're fucking thank saying you. because a lot of people on the show, if you like, eat an almond, they freak out. So I just want to okay, make sure. Okay, thank it's, you. And I, I, you'll have to tell me again because I will forget. Okay, because I'm so present with will, you that I'm like not worried about anything else except like connection with you 
Uh, and so I'll forget. Like, I'll be like, oh, God, you're, you know. I'm obsessed with us. I, I am too. <laughs> well, I and I'm, I'm I'm a little bit like, as I'm saying this, like, can you say that you thought you were molested? I read something. Wait, 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 what, what do you mean, can you say I think I was molested? Because I don't have remember something anything. something brave and like anyone listening is like. But, I, but maybe I'm thoughts. just assuming something happened because I was a baby because I literally have been in sessions with my therapist that I've had for a while. And I remember, this is not a joke. One time she goes, hold on just one second. She goes, so remind me when you were molested because I know I have it. And I go, I wasn't. She was like, are you sure? Because this is just, and I'm like, all the things, all of the checklists are there of like my fear. And then I start looking into molestation Do you and sleep I realize, in clothes? That's yeah, a but I don't one. mind sleeping naked. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, I realized that uh, when I listen to this podcast that I really recommend, if you're fascinated in the topic of like, good for you. <laughs> If you're fascinated, don't listen to anything else. But if somehow this <laughs> yeah, we'll ends, play, I'll play it on this podcast so that I get to listen. So yeah, we'll, yes. we'll play it here. Don't worry. Okay. So it's a podcast called Hunting Warhead that I got turned on to from just a, it's a, a, you know, one of those like serial type uh, things, investigative. And it's about child sex abuse images, uh, AKA child porn, but that's a bad way to say it because it makes it sexualized. So it's child sex abuse images. Oh, great, great, great. It is that's so fascinating. much. This is the one place where I say like, like it's interesting, like where words actually matter because yeah, like there's. They do. I hate when people say comedian. It's actually sex abuse, ch it's child sex abuse victim. <laughs> I, fl I flubbed that line. <laughs> that was so, can I tell you something? I, I, it's, it's, it's such a good joke. And I, whenever I fucking flub a good joke, it's been, it sucked. It I was like, it was, so it was in my head, and I was trying to say present while also no, like getting back so to it. You were so excited about it I too. Know. Did you see it? I'm like, like, really Winnie, I can't wait to tell you my story. I knew what you my were doing. Joke I came up with Winnie. I Do I get like, an I, A? No, I felt like a little conductor. Because, oh, oh my god! god. And then, like, don't flub it, don't flub it. You know, it's like oh. when you send like a great bird on text, and there's a and fucking there's a type misspelling oh. on it, and then you have to do a star <laughs> and write like streets. I had a fucking banger joke to Rogan the other day. I like sent it, and I was like, boom. No. And then it had autocorrected. He was like, what are you doing? Are you stoned? And I was like, ah! And you wrote, duck! <laughs> uh, and then you correct it and you write duck again. You're like, no, I mean duck. And you're like, duck, duck, duck. duck. It's like, you sound insane. Why don't insane. we just change fuck to duck? To duck. Why don't we I don't just duck go, it now. Why yeah. don't we just say that? Duck you. Why don't we just embrace Does what? it feels good as fuck? I know, but the phone just is going to decide how we it talk It really now. is. We should just acquiesce. I, um. So I'm sorry, to get back of so the I, I images. So I discovered this podcast. And it really took me into this world of chi child sex abuse images and the dark web and how these are made and what's happening and how, how, like, and then there's this podcast, I, uh, other podcast that I recommend, it, it was Sam Harris's podcast, Making Sense, and it's mm. called uh, The Other Pandemic. And it's, a, it's, that's the title of it. It was, came back out last year and I avoided it because I was like, I don't want to know about another strain of fucking COVID, but it was about ch child abuse and it gave me all the details that I need to 5% of the general population watches uh, child sex abuse images, AKA child pornography, Say it five again. 5%. And let me explain that 5%. That's not 5% of people aren't molesters. That's not the right percentage for that. We know that there's science behind that, even though people don't really come out and we can't document it, but that's a, that's it's not 5% of people are molesters. 5% of people are, Though in the general population, when you look in a room of people, 5% of those people are watching on a regular basis child pornography, child sex abuse images. On the I'm sorry. dark web. On the dark web. Here is the thing. Those aren't child molesters, all of them. What's happening now with porn is becoming so extreme. There's so much extremism online of like decapitations. Okay, now I'm going to watch a girl in a cage. Now I'm going to watch a girl get spit on. Now I'm going to watch a- desensitized. And then the most, ex what's the most extreme thing? Children. children and it's an extreme they're not even turned on by children being a molester you know around puberty when you're, if you are uh, attracted to children or not it's that's that's how you know yeah when you start ch to change you're still a child kind of and you can't st there is a clear-cut like definitive like that's when you know you are a uh, pederast or a pedophile is i think is someone who was pederast i think pederast is you haven't acted on it pedophile pedophile is you're attracted to children pederast means you've acted on it and, but but then pederast like they have to identify themselves as that which means they that, then implicate themselves and everyone but, thinks but, they've done it and they're but, lying but also but also how yeah exactly so th so this is the 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 point about uh pedophile rehabilitation or whatever if we're not just going to send them to a fucking uh, now my algorithm there's a guy named petter ass <laughs> P-E-T-T-E-R. We just Googled this. And that, that poor guy. Poor buddy. <laughs> oh, my oh God. No. He was, oh, yeah. Oh, you my God. he was molested? He had one daughter. Well, let's check in on her. So, 
<laughs> How's she doing? I'm so obsessed with this topic because, and I, I feel like I can never say this because it's just like you have to really put nuance on it. And you have I to know. Go. So to me, the this QAnon thing, where it's like QAnon people are fucking crazy, QAnon people. These are people that have heard whether it's, you know, it's it's it is not true, but there is a ton of child sex trafficking in America. It's not out of like a, a pizza place. It's not out it's, of a famous person's pizza place in LA. No one in LA eats carbs and you know that. There are no pizza places here um, uh, with pizza, much less fucking children. Yeah, when children. you see like a new like, uh, I don't know, calzone place or like a, bre- like a bread company, you're just like, in LA, that's a front. That's what's a, going yeah, on there? What's really going, yeah, exactly. When they're like, uh, celebrities are eating babies out of pizza place. I'm like, there's a pizza place in LA? Wait, <laughs> Oh yeah, what, literally where? It's like when I found out there was a Krispy Kreme. They have bread bowls there. That's definitely some bullshit. I, I, no I, one's. It was getting I a bread bowl there was in a Hollywood. Cra- there's fucking pizza that's not cauliflower crust. Like where is it? I want to have a James Byrall. When I heard um, there was a Krispy Kreme in Burbank, they were like someone got shot at a Krispy Kreme in Burbank, and I was like, that was what, what you were like. I was like, where? <laughs> That's so funny. Fucked up. But I mean, we have so so. Let but me here's a, but oh, let yeah, me just really me. quick because I, and why it is so important that everybody listening to this understand how f- important this conversation is because it's not just about. I'm obsessed with talking about because it because we need to. The effects, like uh, like the effects of it, are so big. That's it. Okay. Everything that's wrong with the world is because someone was molested and couldn't talk about it. That's like, it. Okay. So the uh, QAnon people, the people that are like they're sex trafficking and they're killing babies. These are, in my opinion, I'm generalizing, people that were sexually abused. And want to stop it. And they are like, they hear that and they just go into fucking fight or flight protection mode. They don't have hmm. the correct data. And It is me, happening, but, but not there. But yeah. not there. So it's like, there is, there, this, pro- this is a problem. You were molested, obviously. It's a nightmare. You don't have... 20 years and $500,000 to sit in psychotherapy and heal yourself. Mm-hmm. Like you, like what choice you have? You're just a victim. And I mean, when I see people like that, like comment me on Instagram or have this like vitriol, I look at these like Twitter things. I'm like, these they were to probably me, molested these to me are all people that have been hurt, hurt and are just dealing with so much pain. It's, it's, it's when you get honked at in traffic, when you we get can't yelled at, heal when- this or stop it. If no one will admit that it's a problem, a lot of it is, is within the family. Families are invested in being in denial uh, about it. The sexual abuse in my family, everyone knows about it, but no one discusses it. Yeah. It didn't happen because <sighs> then they'd have to feel the guilt. So sorry. Yeah. Oh, no, of, like of it was our it. fault that it happened. Yes. And that's and the thing. It's w- not. Kind of there. was, but it, listen, it is, but it wasn't because you, uh, even if you, because I always say I wasn't molested, and my parents think they're they're like proud of it, and I'm like, but you shouldn't be because you put us in a lot of places where we could have been, and I became obsessed with molestation when I was young. I when I, as soon as I found out about kidnappers, I had a younger sister, and I made fucking sure she didn't molest it. There would be times that my parents would let her go, and I go, no, like there was a weird van, like I was obsessed. With my sister getting molested, which also makes me feel like something must have happened That's to me. A we- it's a weird thing for a kid to worry about if it Obsessed. has. I mean, because as a kid, you'll also like jump off a tire swing and oh, not I was, think you're going to hurt yourself. My first word was dangerous. I would I'd go dangerous. Da- my first multi, besides mom and dad, my first word was dangerous. And I point out dangerous things. And can I ask you something else that why this is so fucked up and important? It's also, it's like, you know, I know so many women as moms that already feel guilt that they have to that work all day, but they can afford to have someone watch their kid or daycare. Like the idea of like I have to choose between watching my kid like a hawk every five minutes and fucking having a job. That's now why I have my I job all day. Say... I just have to, it's like it's such a fucking nightmare. Don't blame the victim's parents. Don't underestimate the power and the conniving Trump. Ted Bundy got women in his car over and over and over. They and weren't like, why stupid. Didn't, why didn't Why didn't this girl's friend no have a pit in her stomach about that guy? It's like oh. like what? My dad, I got made me so mad recently there was a girl a couple years ago fault. <laughs> there was a girl a couple years ago i was doing this as a bit but I, it's just it, it needs to be said there was a girl a couple years ago that drunkenly walked stumbled out of a bar drunk totally drunk okay i'm not saying that i love when people tell stories of when they were like a, a friend of mine was telling a story about when she got roofied and she was and i only had two drinks and i'm like you don't need to say that to me you could have had 18 drinks yeah. i'd still believe yep, yep, you yep. okay because that doesn't need to be a part of your story because that yeah. doesn't fucking matter but i had had two drinks yeah like, like or she goes but it was only two and i'm like no, i don't need to know to that you can have as many drinks as you yes. want if you know when you're fucking roofied as opposed to when you've had a bunch of cocktails. And my skirt was below the knee, so, like, yeah. what? And Exactly. We're still apologizing. It, it, it happens because we're, it's a reflex now as women to be like... we know it's the first thing people say in, in every... Tri- it's like, well, even if we don't you know, had four drinks and then you got roofied? We How know. do we even know? That we set up just- stories to go, yeah. yeah, well, I shouldn't have been doing that. So my dad called me after this girl. She got into the wrong Uber. She stumbled out. There's security footage. I remember when it came. It was tr- tragic. She gets in the wrong Uber. She just happens to get into a murderer's Uber. Uber. 
the worst, she won the worst lottery. Like you get it, how many times have I gotten the wrong Uber? So many freaking times. And it just wasn't the guy that would murder a woman. You know, I just got lucky. And my dad called me up and he goes, you, I go, dad, he goes, that, can you imagine like how, he was just scared for me because he knows he takes, I take Uber. So he's trying to like put out information like, she shouldn't have been just getting in Ubers like that. And I go, I, I well, do that well, all the time, that, Dad. But here's what I'll say. You do take them to your home, and they know where you're staying. They know where you I know live. everything else about it is, yeah, like, yeah, that's so... A, he, that, by the way, yeah, it's we're giving a different person our home address every day. Like, what she are the She was odds? so foolish to get in the wrong one, and except the, way, the right one wouldn't might, you know maybe could have been a murder, too. You know what I used to do? I was like, okay, I can't get murdered by an Uber driver. Like, I know, like, whatever, I'm high risk, and, and security people told me not to and whatever. And then they're like, you cannot let an Uber driver take you to your home because then they know where you live you fucking moron and they can sell that to other people and whatever and I was like oh great great yeah yeah okay so I'll just have him drop me off at like a different house and you have to walk in the dark home no by the way I, and then like, your neighbors get murdered no, no. that's what I said I didn't realize that like two months later I was like if he comes and murders me he's gonna think I live here oh my god can you imagine if there was a mur that would be so fucking <laughs> they, they like they did like I'm so sorry you guys he thought he was murdering me and he murdered you and oh like I my just, I, god I like, Whitney I know, the endless I, guilt I had a guy come to my house and I would always pretend that I, I, I would take pictures without my house in the background and like on my street and then four neighbors down were like here's a ring camera of a guy like knocking on the door last night looking for you oh my on god. their door and I was oh like my oh god. I'm so sorry you, yeah it happened to you that exact thing happened holy yeah. shit yeah 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 it's this is so the the girl got in a car with a murderer oh sorry the girl got in the car with a murderer he he murdered her so she, she got the most she literally it's like a fish jumping out of the water and f falling in a, a fisherman's boat right like it's like the worst thing that happened she just picked the wrong goddamn car to get into she got murdered okay so my dad calls me he's like that would never happen to you Nikki. On, and i go this, yes it would this dad. is someone you know no, no no this was a news story big news story this woman you, they footage of her it was it was he's terrible. in jail I don't know how it ended. Yeah, they caught. I believe they caught this guy immediately because it was just everything yeah, about course. the case was but out the next day on Daily Mail, and I was looking at all the but footage. Everything's and was, tracked, so they know exactly. If you're a murderer and you're in an Uber, no, no, she he, she got into a regular car that was not an Uber. She thought it was her Uber, and she just got into the back of a guy's car, and he was just like, I, I honestly had a joke about it where he was probably like, God, I don't, I want to murder someone today, and I just don't want to. If I'm supposed to, send me a sign. And she's like, Is it Courtney? Ah! And he's just like. You know, like, that's why I don't like God sending signs, like, always looking for signs, because it could be the thing that, like, she just got unlucky. There wasn't anything that girl did that I wouldn't do. And that's why I told my dad, I go, because he goes, you would never do that. He wanted to convince himself that his daughter is going to be smarter than her. But the truth no. is, I'm not. Even though I don't drink anymore, I get into wrong Ubers all the time. And my dad was like, you do, you look, you have to look at the license plate. And I go, dad, sometimes I just know. And then sometimes I like, oh, like, I didn't know. And... And he goes, well, uh, still, if you got in there, that wouldn't happen to you because I taught you different. Because he always taught, my dad always taught me, if I ever got into a car, if a guy ever tries to get you into a car, d just try to do anything to not go to the second location because you're not going to go do a podcast. Like, he's taking you to the woods yeah. to kill you. Yeah. Like, the second location is dead. So even if you have to, like, steer the car on the highway and flip it a bunch of times, you might, there's a less chance you're going to die there than the certainty you're going to die at mm -hmm. wherever he takes you. So do but whatever you can. Other, but here's the other thing that's tricky about that. Sorry, just to be in the yeah, no. granular about this because Emily got in an Uber recently and they took her this to a crazy like backwoods area with no cell reception like super around and like kept pulling over and stopping like it was just like yeah it was horrible I, I got out of the car and just like sobbed to stare oh, at she, was, like, God, she was like she was like she like could it was and it was it I know exactly where they were it was a place that I was like I can see how this person would take that route but it's five miles out of the way and it is a place that like never has cell reception but you could have gotten out of the car i could have he you didn't know how close to my house i had no had. idea you didn't it was know a dirt. really being murdered and you didn't want to make a scene if it turns out you're not that happened to me i was got into an uber and it was the wrong car but the right license plate but r different car color and everything i got in and there were two guys driving and i just didn't even think about it i was like late for this hair point appointment it was in a weird town in florida in the jacksonville florida i get in and it's two guys, and I go, are you allowed to have two people? And they just didn't really talk to me. No! They looked like two guys that were not Uber drivers to me. They were both wearing, like, wife beaters, like, kind of junky car. And I'm like, oh, my. And then I look, and I'm not joking you, sawed off uh, door lock. Okay. And I, what I did, I texted Andrew, my opener, and I go, this is my location. I'm in the back of an Uber with two people. I We're driving in the direction I'm supposed to be going, but this is not looking good. And I go, I th I honestly think I'm, I, I prepared myself to be raped. I was like, this is it. This is like, 
when you get raped, you probably go, oh, I'm, I'm about to be raped. You must maybe have that moment as a woman. You have and a I was Darwinian like, I had thing it. of like, just don't, don't make, don't either. I was like, what do I do? You Be as calm as possible to reduce the amount of danger right now. Like deer in the headlights, they freeze. They fr The reason deer freeze is not because they're dumb and whatever. They freeze in case the threat's going to keep on going and not see them. So we also do have this freeze response that's like when people are like, I should have screamed. I should have yelled. It's like, no, we are wired to just freeze in I case the threat passes. Yep. you know but then it's be as loud as fucking possible you're so right the freezing took place but I want to just say even if the door had been open and we would have been at a stop sign I wouldn't have run out because of the chance of how stupid that would look I always can put myself in a position of any of these times where it's like it was my fault I got molested I got raped like even if you maybe maybe you did something that was like that you go, no, but mine's different. I really did it. Like, you don't know how you're going to act in these scenarios no, ever again. And ever. you can never, ever tell someone, why did you do that? My friend got held up at gunpoint the other day and uh, on Fairfax. And Carl yeah, Carlisle's boyfriend got hung, held up at gunpoint. And the, the, these kids were, they said they were like, you know, really young kids and they were he told, could tell the kids were as scared, scared as, yeah. and a lot of times that's why murders happen because kids get so scared they just they like, just do they sh that, they're shaking but and it's, they pull the, the way, it's also a lot of the, a lot of w when women get murdered the murderer is obviously a psychopath not not defending their behavior they were just not always them. a psychopath it ends up or, or yes or a sociopath but a psychopaths famously like in prison when they study their brains a lot of when they kill someone, to them, they're not taking someone's life. They're just solving a problem because they don't have empathy. They're not like, right. you know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's, it's like, like so I had to do that to get the well, thing that I wanted. It's this. That's it's, all I think about is what I want. No, I was just going to rape her, but then she started screaming and I had to stop the screaming. Yeah. Like I, I didn't, I was, I'm not a murderer. I just had to stop her from screaming so loud. It's so, so fucking it's, that's what they crazy. say. Yeah. They think they, of it like, like a computer. Like I just shut down the computer because it was having a malfunction. Yeah. I raped her and I was going to take her I back to her house. I couldn't find the volume. So I just But then she kept screaming. So I just killed her if she had just you know what I mean that's sort of how they think so a lot of times and when you know something like that when you've like studied murders a lot which we all yes. sort of are doing now you go sure. like okay if they're gonna rape me maybe I just deal with that because if I scream they'll kill me because to solve the problem <laughs> so yes. I shouldn't scream like, now I like, can't scream. now I have to remember to scream fire instead of rape like all yeah, these yeah. things there's all these rules but there's always someone that you're gonna go like I, I when I when he got held up at gunpoint he did not do what the guy said he just froze he didn't know what to do and and I, her, his girlfriend who was so horrified was like why wouldn't you get on the ground like you could have been shot you didn't do it he goes this person, I don't know there's no, but, but by the way there's no way if you move that could be why he exactly you. yeah there's no you can do that all day but we all do that like I should have just done this one thing mm -hmm. that would have been it's like you don't know how you're ever gonna act and mm -hmm. you can never judge someone for how they act in, a, in an emergency where they think they're about to be murdered how if you're gonna freeze if you're gonna jump out of the car you hope that you hear enough of these stories that you can prepare yourself when something happens but you don't you and never you don't Oh, no, you don't know. And also, it's like I remember when, like, watching the like Derek Chauvin, you know, execution for nine minutes, and my brain is like, why didn't anyone so fucking run in there and stop it? Like, why is the why? bystander effect? Yeah, and you're like, why? People and, were just I mean, filming there's that. There's like, a lot more. How did no on one there? run in? But it's like yeah. because, like, I, I can say all day that I would have, like, you know, but like, who who knows? There's you don't. No. There's an amazing, st uh, uh, I, I, I learned about this, I have to remember what the case is, of a woman, it was in an apartment complex, and this was, I, I think I, I studied this in a psychology. Oh yeah, this is, a, the, the, it's a bystander effect, it's a Kitty Genovese, uh, 1937, I believe, it, or maybe, no, this was in the 60s. I think it was later, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was, she was coming home from work, and she got stabbed by a guy, raped and stabbed, screamed for like 15 minutes. They all heard Every, her. A hundred, hundred people, like so many people heard her, no one called because everyone assumed someone else called. Someone else called, and then the guy came back and killed her. And came back and and finished her off as she begged for her life when she could have been saved so many times. And the thing is, like, you, you, and even if you're someone, like, let's say that, like, you, you, um, maybe you're someone who grew up and you, your sister got molested, and you were the one that told on your stepdad for it, and you saved your sister, and that's why it, it stopped. And then you hear about a case where you go, that brother didn't tell on the stepdad, uh, I would have, I, I, I can say I would have because I did. 
No, you can't say that you would have in his case. You don't have the same life as that child did. Mm -hmm. Just because you were in the same circumstance, stop this, I would have done that. You do not know. If you were born into that person's body and had their experience and had their brain, which is a different brain than your... Circumstancing, limiting, limiting uh, You don't uh, know what you would ever do, even if it's the same scenario that you've been in. You Mm -hmm. can't... Empathy is not about putting on someone's shoes, wearing your body in someone else's shoes. It's literally being in their body with their same experience. You don't know what that's like. But also, human beings are wired. It depends on how you're making works your ancestral trauma like many things but like you know most of the time if you're in a dangerous situation freezing is the uh most auspicious thing to do for your safety like yeah. it and our brains our bodies we all saw jurassic park and we've way, all our brain our bodies know more than our brains for the most part so it's like when a bear when you see those yeah. women where a bear is like sniffing a person and they're just standing completely still and you're like run you motherfucker but you it's that know. that's the worst thing you that's, can do because food runs you'll never ever food. outrun a bear i know with i'm so scared of bears but i have dreams about bears all the time a bear doesn't think that you're a prey until you run until you run when you run just k- kiss your life so goodbye you have to just sit there and fucking hopefully not be on your period so you don't smell like blood mm-hmm. and uh just let it fucking sniff you and you will be safe it seems so like um counterintuitive counterintuitive it's like the way that moose defeat bears this fascinates me because this is like it changed my life and the way that i i move through life because i used to sort of be very um not pugnacious but always at war like defending myself and because i'm like i'm protecting myself i'm gonna stand up for myself so i'm gonna, like this person like disrespects me i'm gonna fucking go there is a person that i know is um hurtful to other people in my business. Oh, yes. And uh, I want to fucking go. It's all about the timing and it's all about waiting and waiting and waiting for someone to sort of ram you. So the way... For Hannibal Burris so that to come out and make... Like, we all have to wait for that sometime. Sometimes and, you Or gotta, to get, have it happen to you so that you have enough evidence that people trust you because if it's all hearsay, I know about someone that I'm dying to cancel. I am getting... Uh, there's a girl who told me about a lot of abuse happening on a show that she worked on and it, I already sensed it because I did the show and I was like, yeah, I feel it. Uh, just being someone who's being protected from it and it's in the air. But here's what they do. They're, it's like it's like the people that actually work there, they can't do anything or they'll lose your, their job and have a bad reputation forever as being like the snitch. It's like it's the, it's the like sometimes I go, oh, it's the people that have no skin in the game that actually should say something because we wouldn't lose anything. Yeah. You know, but it's also I'm the least right. qualified to talk about it because I wasn't there and now I just look like a justice warrior. Like like I'm the savior of everyone's toxicity and shit. And then they're like, well, Whitney, you made this roast joke 10 years ago and you're like, oh. You knew. You must I, have known. Or like, like you, you fucking you made fun oh. of Lisa Limpinelli, and, said, and you're just like, okay, fair, but um, uh, yeah, and it's moose, just the way oh, moose yeah, what kill bears. Moose this yeah. is the literally they the, tweet at them a, and meta- <laughs> a <laughs> metaphor that changed my fucking life. Um, yeah, they released the bears news. <laughs> um, moose, when a bear is charging them. They wait, they do not run, they do not move at all, and at the last minute, they put their back leg out, and the bear breaks th- the bear breaks their neck on the moose's foot with the o- their own force. Oh my God. Wild. So you can basically, you can see, like there's videos online of bears charging a moose. You're like, why isn't that moose fucking doing anything? At the last minute, puts its back leg out and then the bear breaks its neck with its own- Oh my God. God. Own like That's velocity. Some, like jujitsu stuff. It's like, like let using someone else or- kill themselves on you. Yeah. It's like, that's, I think that's what like all that stuff that, all the R- Rogan does. It's all about like using things to like use their force against themselves. Them. Like, it's like yeah. hold, it's like if someone's coming for you, hold, hold. I know hold, it's so hold. hard to do that. It's really hard because you want to fucking fight back before it gets worse. But sometimes you got to let it get a little bit worse so you have the maximum amount of power and leverage to protect yourself. I tried to do a bit about this. I love that this is all in like bits we're trying to do that are weird. Yeah, because that's how we get out but information. But we're going to figure it out. And help people. And, but as a comedian, that's what we do. We are able to go into these really dangerous haunted house and spaces and like make it digestible to talk about and think about and then like it's a conversation, right? So that's part of what we're heroes. We're heroes. Laughter is the best medicine. It's the medicine. only thing I know how to do. So Laughter's it's, the best medicine. We are doctors. Oh God, we healing. are licensed. Yeah, we can. <laughs> doctors. You can either do psilocybin or you can go to Whitney's <laughs> early Friday show. In ruining our own <laughs> lives, uh, we help heal yours. We do. We really do. <laughs> we I've been the bullet. I've been starting to take some of my own advice that I give my like podcast listeners because I've heard so much of like, you've made me look at life this way and this way. And sometimes I go, what would Nikki do? Like I literally go, what would the version, what would I want? M- what advice would I give to myself? Yeah, because I talk to my podcast listeners like they're my best friends and I just want them all to have such good days because it's kind of like a morning show of like, just like let's be honest with ourselves Let's like kind of let things slide. Like, 
let's don't blame people that hurt you, but just know that they've been hurt. Try to under have empathy. And sometimes when I'm frustrated, I go like, what would I tell my if I was my podcast listener, what would I tell her? And then I'm able to get out of it. And it's like been it's it actually has been therapeutic. I and hate that me, it like comes back. And let me say this. Let me say this too. However you get there, it doesn't fucking matter. If it's if it's cheaper than paying seven thousand dollars for a therapist that doesn't do like but um, uh, I'm trying to everything. This is something this is helping my my female friendships as well is when you see a uh, um a female friend go and we all do it the smartest of us the most mature of us the most well meaning of us we're in a bad relationship a relationship that is obviously been, and you get in the dopamine and the oxytocin you just can't see clearly and then when someone comes to me I'm always like I'm going to say to you what I think you would tell me if I was in your situation. And it does like make people less defensive also yeah. when you're like, I'm only going to say this because I think it's what you would say to me if the roles were reversed. And I'm I not going to judge what you do with it. I think you'd say this and this and this. Yeah, to me, yes. <laughs> I think that's what you would that say to me. me. Like, that's a, that wasn't really what that wasn't exactly, exactly but but you but the, it was I don't similar have to in the gloves with you in, in the in the it was a no you didn't and that's what I really like loved about seeing you today and like when I walked in to your room in there and just I was just like I need you like I was on the way here like trying to draft this text that was gonna possibly blow up my life or something you know and you were able to really convince me like let's take a beat and run through a lot of you have a lot of tools for processing these things that are valuable to me and so like I I've sent a lot of texts. I regret. Oh my I god! I'm so glad uh, we're friends, and that like reminds me. Like I feel like with your female friendships. Like I, we've talked about this before, but I was so scared. I was telling someone recently our history, and I was like, I was so intimidated by her. Didn't wanted to stay out of her way. Didn't even want her to see me because I didn't want her to like hate me or like th think that or like I didn't want to bother. Like I knew you knew, but I was just scared of you and thought that you were a different person and then you are and truly the person that I were, were absolutely different than when we first met in 2006 but like the person I get to see now out of you is like there's just so much love like I just love female friendships so much and I love how quickly they can come in like I fell in love with you when I did your podcast the first time coming on here and now it's my third time and like I really I'm just so Female friendships are the fucking best, and I it, it happens very. It's like love at first sight, and I love how quickly it can happen. And but I'm I gonna think, know you forever. But I do also think that part of like I'm so glad we're getting close now because it's only in the last five years that I wasn't a fucking mess. Like I'm glad you didn't know me. No, I I when I was like I when, I knew when to come in. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't ready for you. I wasn't. Ready. I would have come in because I would have done anything you said. But I'm but so we, glad you didn't summon me. <laughs> I'm so glad that we got to become friends when I'm more cooked as a person because I would have been like walking on eggshells around you were to hurt your feelings because there's nothing worse than a female friendship where they give you bad advice because they're worried about hurting your feelings but they'd rather give you bad advice that's going to hurt you way more so I was you know I always <laughs> we always laugh about like when you I always say never ask like a girlfriend that has known you forever for advice about relation for them to be able to say you always do this remember Jake remember so and so they can give you a history of a, and show you a pattern mm -hmm. but like fresh eyes on something like because I hear a lot of like, oh, he's just not calling because I think he likes you too much. Like you're That's trying, always the case. you're yeah. trying to not, you're trying to stop me from having this heartbreak. I see what you're trying to do, but it's being so much. Just give it to me real. Give it to me. I'm know. the person that's like. You, you said some things to me in there that I was just like, God, fuck. It's just like not what I wanted to hear. And I'm only able to accept that from you because I'm 37 years old. Like I would have. I was also I, ready to say it to you in a way that wasn't uh, just fucking. What do you even? I was able to say like. Yeah, you didn't. You didn't. I didn't. You didn't make me feel bad about who I was for being in the situation I am in that I got to because I'm not making good decisions. And you it didn't also, make me feel bad. And here's what. Well, the first thing I always ask is, do you want support for what you're already going to do? You said that or advice or advice. I, I'm happy to do either. I will do either. If you want to send this right now. I'll fucking help you send it. And I also say, I might not take your advice. And so when you give it to me, like, I know that I'm safe not taking yes. your advice and you, we'll still be friends. Yeah, oh my I'll God. I'll do the opposite totally. and you'll still but be like. But then I first want to, like, see we'll go from what, there. what the person's at. Because most people, when they're asking for advice, they're asking for a thumbs up on what they're already going to do. Yeah. They That's just what I was looking for. And then when you ask that, I go, no, I want the, that means, do you want me to lie to you or want the truth? It's clear that you need another rock bottom on it. Like, you need a yes. reminder. You need a refresher. Totally. I've done it with, with family members members that I was like okay we have I haven't been in your life for 10 years you know what I just need to see them again and see if anything changed up oh, it hasn't needed that remind sometimes I you know. need that you need more proof it's like you need more proof so get it I like that's why I, I keep smoking pot like I I've quit so many things that have like 
gotten to bottoms where I'm like, okay, well, this is it. This just ruined this thing that's important to me. So I'm going to drop drinking. I'm going to stop having sex with men before I'm in a relationship. Love it. I'm going to stop having and eating, starving myself or binging. I'm going to stop. Like, all, I, I, I'm, I, I'm abstinent or sober from all these behaviors. But when it comes to pot... That's where we've. I, that's where I'm still struggling. It's like work. But here's what I'll say. That's a fucked up one because maybe it will be different this time with pot. It's it always be different. different this time. It's because, always different. Sometimes it's killer. It's sometimes it's every terrible. strain of weed is actually different. So it's so true. Cool. Or like I'm like no. This time it might be different because in fucking edibles they cook weird. So some I don't of them do are edibles too anymore. I don't. I'm off because Rogan. Days off Rogan enlightened. Seventy days off. I'm Seventy days off. Oh my edibles, god. Yeah. I can still smoke weed and vape, but edibles like. My brain, I've talked about it in the podcast before. It's a different drug. You know that, right? Your body literally processes edibles different. Joe told me this. It, it blew my mind because I never was having good edible experiences. It's a different drug than when you smoke THC. It's a completely different thing in your body. So there's a reason why you don't like them. It's not pot. But I'm also, because of my workaholism and need to always be like productive at all times. I don't want something to kick in later. The 40-minute wait... So for, I don't have that kind of time. Well, I, I can't manage that. that. Only, I don't that kind of like But also 40 vagueness. minutes to someone else is different. 40 minutes to me is different. A minute feels like 40 minutes already to me. So I'm like, it's been 40 minutes. It hasn't kicked in. I got a dud. I'm going to take two more. Yep. These aren't working. Obviously this, oh. I want immediate. It's, 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 it's we're sativa. Comics. We want the laughs right away. I, I don't, don't want to. time. Yeah. I want to be high now. I want the, Exactly. I want it now. I'm compulsive. That did saw me fall and hit my head on that fucking wall because I had had 10 of those blueberries. No. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm so glad you're not doing and that this anymore. Is, but this Don't. is, what, this is Just, when I stopped. I actually didn't stop. It wasn't because- That wasn't the fall. The no, fall that wasn't the rock bottom. No, no, no. That was like, did you get that? Were you filming? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That I did. That was kind of a Lucille Ball. That was hilarious. You didn't get a TikTok out of that. I was making content. We now take an abrupt break in our. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I took an abrupt break. We took an abrupt break. That's called. That's called in the theater method world. Method acting. Yeah. We now take an abrupt break from the podcast that I have now uh, started calling Two Broken Girls." <laughs> Uh, my chat with Nikki Glazer and I takes a, a quick break so that you guys can find out if there's something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals, especially since you're currently listening to two women who have not. You guys <laughs> over there, you made a, a great video. Okay, they wrote that. Uh, you guys we made names. You, you, no, you made a video. You put in great. <laughs> Last time, <laughs> Emily putting great <laughs> about better help. Uh, I did the video. The video you guys made about better help last week was okay. Your lines are over. You, yeah, you yeah. We know you loved our video. <laughs> Sound aside, See? like most creative duos, we had some differences <laughs> and we broke up. <laughs> Don't do your line read as if you're mad at I me. I had to. What are you doing? <laughs> do you think that in theaters and in plays and in movies, actors can? Do just... you think that in theaters and plays and movies <laughs> that they shit on their co-stars like this? <laughs> are you <laughs> Leah Michelle? Keep going. I hope so. I hope I'm the Leah Michelle of comedy. I would love to away. quit when I was 32. <laughs> Against my will. We can make uh, that happen. So, <laughs> Benton and I wrote a script, and I just don't think it conveyed how better, amazing BetterHelp is at matching you with your own personal licensed professional therapist. I, I think just, it did. Oh. You don't even haven't heard it. I, I, I wrote a script, and I we're gonna let me share the script. I okay, wrote with let's you. share. The, okay, we're gonna read it for you now. Can I, think I yell action? Great. You can yeah. yell action. Now. Okay, y'all are about to do a scene. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ready? and right, wait, we're ooh. doing a scene that is going to explain perfectly how BetterHelp can help. Okay, and we're gonna do this like a real production. Sound speeding, and action. Hey, thanks for answering. I know you're at work. Oh, no worries. I was just about to head in and do a nose job on some famous Instagram baby. Are you a dentist? Well, yeah, I started off as a dentist, but I took a few master classes and now I'm exploring my craft. Oh my God. Okay. Well, that red flag aside, I'd like to get your opinion on something. Since I started my company, I've been really anxious. I'm constantly stressed and I just can't seem to shake the feeling that it's all going to fall apart and I'm some kind of imposter. Oh, well, I can totally see how you opening up your own seafood restaurant on Etsy could be rough, but this has been your dream since we were little kids. Remember when you used to catch crawfish in the creek and you drop them off in my locker in those tiny envelopes? You, If anyone can do this, you can do it. It's just so much more pressure now. The thought of failure has taken all the joy out of shipping shrimp. 
I just don't know if this is a good idea anymore. I need an honest opinion. Will this company fail? I need to know if these feelings are something I should pay attention to. Emily, if there's anyone who's going to push the limits of shellfish shipment and the Etsy-appropriate packaging of newspapers and old Amazon packages, it's you. And if you don't believe me, maybe you should just call a licensed professional at BetterHelp! See, I think that was really good. I, I agree. It had a story arc. It had a problem. It was... And we've never entered the realm of seafood shipping on Etsy. At, I mean, I LOL'd. And I've, you know, I've been dead for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> BetterHelp is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. <laughs> this podcast is... <laughs> <laughs> This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Not that any of us need it. Why do you start every line like you're Maggie Dame Smith? (laughs) This podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp. What are you doing? Dame Maggie Dame Smith. Dame Maggie Smith. Whatever. You know her. I don't know who either of those people are. (laughs) This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. And good for you listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Whitney. Support Emily's shrimp business. (laughs) Here, good for you. We do nothing if not take serious care of ourselves. Emily, didn't you recently go to the spa like during a work day? Yes, and I learned my lesson. <laughs> hmm. Ah, uh, self care day. Oh, look at these little bows. Oh my God, can you hear me? Oh yeah, we're in a meditative state. You're oh. ready to relax. Oh, I'm just here to start a healthier life with better rituals. Perfect. Let's get you wet. Ooh, ow, this is cold. Y- well. Is this nuts? Ew, what is that? Oh, this is plant goo. People love it. Ew, is it traceable? Uh, I got it in my backyard. Ew, gross. Ew, that's hot. But this sh- was in my pocket. Ew, this hurts. What, my oh, eye. Oh, this is a nice little roller. Very soothing. Ew, I don't like this. It's not very pleasant. Ew, what? Are those lemons? These are lemons. Ew. Have an apple. Ew, I don't... Oh, is this organic? Oh, your negative energy. Oh, God, gross. Ew, gross. That was a butterscotch. Ew, that's definitely and not... that's traceable. for breeze. Ew, gross. Uh, are you letting me on fire? Uh, Okay, there's got to be blueberries. I'm not enjoying this. Oh, you wanted something easy and enjoyable. Well, you should have tried a ritual protein powder. Okay. Oh, a ritual protein shake. Clean plant-based formula. Delicious flavor. 20 grams of pea protein. No added sugar. And it's soy and gluten-free. Aren't they delicious? Oh, are you still here? Oh, yeah. Yum. Yeah! I mean, I have so many questions about that video because I am incredibly impressed. So why not shake up your ritual? To make something new less scary, Ritual offers a money-back guarantee if you're not 100% in love. Plus, my listeners get 10% off during your first three months. Just visit ritual.com slash Whitney and add essential protein today. That's ritual.com slash Whitney. I just thought I'd do a soothing voice before me and Nikki start squawking again. (laughs) (laughs) This is when I stopped because I I mean, I'm in, everyone knows I'm in 12 step programs and like a a lot of addiction in my family, like have studied addiction very deeply is that it wasn't when I was taking too much. It was when I started to hide it from other people to not, when I stopped sharing. That's it. So if I'm going, you have a blueberry, you have a, let's all have a blueberry. It's when I was like. When you're taking them around people, people know when you're starting, when people vape, I found out one of my good friends vapes. When I, I put the blueberries in a shoe so no one else would find them, that's when I was like, we're done here. We're done. Because I'm being secretive about it. Exactly. And that is why I only smoke marijuana. And I've been vaping recently, but I make sure I vape only around people and like I'm not sneaking it. Because when you start sneaking it, even if you're just trying to be polite and mm-hmm. you're not, a sh- it's not about shame, there's, it's their shame because you're trying to, being polite yep. equals this isn't, this annoys other people. Yes. So, what I, I vaping weed, I was doing it all the time because you could do it everywhere. It doesn't smell, it doesn't linger, and it kind of like dissipates quickly. So you well, you hide. Need, I, it, everyone's brain is different. Some people can yeah. never. Some people can only eat edibles and never pick up a vape. Everyone's totally. got a different thing. You have to know yourself. A vape. I feel like I can have this puff of weed and like forty minutes later, I'm like. No, back. vape for I me really quickly. metabolizes quickly. We, pot smoke, though. I made a rule. I go, I'm only going to smoke. I'm literally, for me to get high, I have to be around. If I want to uh-huh. get high with you guys, I, ca- I can't just go in the bathroom real quick. Nope. I have to light. I either have to roll a joint, which that too, takes too much time. I might as well eat an edible. I like, that's 40 minutes to roll a fucking joint. <laughs> that's like, I can't. It takes too long. Either someone gives me a joint or I, I smoke out of a fucking pipe. I have to look like a crack addict. <laughs> 
and see myself. I always should pull up a mirror when I do it. But I literally, I have to be accountable and I can't do it. If I do it on my own, like sometimes my roommate isn't home. That's why I got a roommate is I, I want to be accountable about my eating. I want to be accountable about my cleanliness and like b- b- just being like. She's like, I'm um, your sober companion. I thought I <laughs> Your friend. <laughs> I mean, truly, it's not. It's, he like, he, hey, um. So here's a journal. I need you to. It's just my podcast document. host, Andrew. I, I make oh. him wear a, 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 a orange vest on flights, and uh, he sits. Ne- he doesn't sit next to me. He's in coach, but that also makes me feel more emotionally supported. Here's a having fanny him be pack full of vitamins. When I was dealing with my eating disorder, that's the only, like I knew it was bad. I knew I needed help, and that it, I wasn't. It was I was managing it. How I did thought, you know so, you needed help? Um, because COVID hit, and it just became glaring, and I was living in my parents house and sleeping in my childhood bed that I'd lived in when I you know I moved out to LA when I was 21 uh had a little success but I moved back home when I was 25 to live with my parents and it was I was drinking a lot then it was just it was that was a bad time I eventually moved to New York and never went back until COVID went home just to wait out COVID because I was in between apartments ended up staying there and by a couple days in not doing comedy not running around doing podcasts and everything and like my lifestyle the eating disorder was just like it was all day waiting to eat because I would just starve all day. Yeah, yeah. Intermittent fasting was a gift to me as an just, anorexic yeah. who wanted an excuse and wanted a culturally exclu- uh, excuse to say to someone when you go to a lunch. Because you have to go, I just ate, I'm vegan, I'm allergic to You have to I'm lie all the gluten. goddamn time yeah. so you can starve and now finally you can go, I'm intermittent fasting. Everyone goes, good for you you're instead like, of I'm, you're anorexic. I am the healthiest person on the planet. Yeah. I never People eat. go, it's oh, like, I've heard yeah. of that. That's not taboo. Instead of me saying, which I said in the end, like when people would see me like start my binge at the end of the night at the comedy cellar I would order like 1800 plates of food because that's when it would begin and it would go throughout the night I would have all this food and people would be like Jesus Christ and I go yeah I have an eating disorder I would literally like said I knew I had one I had dabbled in going and getting some recovery but what finally made me look at it was the fact that COVID made me see that I I wish I had a loved one that wasn't my I'm glad I have my family to live with but I really wish I had a husband or a partner to share this with and the reason I don't is because I I'm hiding an eating disorder and I can't, I would rather eat in bed than have someone in my bed. And I wake up every morning with protein bar wrappers that I ate throughout the night. And it's just, that's just the norm. That's the norm for me in the morning to go, how many was it last night? Oh, uh, and then the next day find some and I go, oh, were those from the other day? Should I, did I eat nine last night? Like I'm talking entire boxes of protein bars in bed. This is why I'm asking you about how did you know, like, were you able to identify me? Because a lot of times when other people tell you you have an eating problem or other people Oh, that's not going to do it. No, it actually, you go, thank you. It makes you, it validates you. I love hearing I look skinny. a lot of times when people are like, you look really skinny, you might have problem you're like nailing it I'm on track well so that's why because I have it such has a, to be self-identified it has to oh be. yeah for any addiction yeah. really you have to like get to a point it, yep. it, it helps that people are honest with it's you a self-diagnosed disease but when when people do get ner- like when people I have a lot of women going like I've had it before where I'm I'm not doing anything tricky with food or I was which I shouldn't have felt guilty about yeah. either. Like there's some kind of like, if you have anorexia, there's some kind of like thing that other women have for you, like a disdain, a resentment of like, you're too skinny. And it's like, I'm not doing this because I want yeah, to I'm be sick. hot. I yeah. can't eat and I don't know why. Yeah. It just is the only thing that makes me feel okay. And I don't get it. And I didn't it's ask the only for thing you it. Can control. I mean, I did beg for it in high school and I was like, I wish I could be anorexic. And then I like threw a penny in a fucking well and it came and true. you're a winner. No, but you're a winner. If you want something, you'll get it. When catching anorexia, and I really say catch because I caught it like a fucking illness. I just, it. it so my anorexia went from being a teenager, not knowing how many calories I need, just being like, I'll just never eat again, almost dying, hospitalized, ended up getting educated enough to manage it where I don't pass out on stage like I used to. I don't, um, I, you know, almost get faint when I'm t- talking. To, like, I managed it, right? Like, no one, I could have gone on forever. Not ever, but it would have eventually ruined my life in other ways, but not in a way that anyone would have seen, right? And um, and there were times that I was too skinny, but it was too skinny in a way that was like applauded and like, oh, your sample size and like you're a, you look like a supermodel, like and stuff you like fit that. And clothes right off. When the someone says you look like a supermodel, stream. it's you're a little bit tall and you look like a skeleton. That and you look like you're starving yourself because and your legs don't touch. And you have thigh gap. I have wide hips, so I do have a thigh gap, but it's not because I. So sometimes I hate when girls are like thigh gaps are natural. I'm like I right now I'm not doing any fu- anything with my food to try to be a certain way. My yeah. body is what it is and I have to accept that. And right now it's good because I got help because what I did was I was desperate. It was uh, March, 2020. I was living at home with my parents. Everything was so scary. 
nothing to like calm my nerves anymore. My eating disorder was surging. I wanted a husband and I was like, this is the time to do this. So I got help and I went on a cooking show yesterday and I talked about it. I go, guys, I would have turned this show down a year ago. I would have made up a lie to get out of it because I don't, it's a show where they recreate fast food mm -hmm. and make it for you. And I don't eat fast food because when I was anorexic, that was just something I said goodbye to, even though I grew up and loved it. Or I, I eat it now. Like I will let it myself, but I don't eat because I just don't crave it. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah, not, yeah. If I wanted it, it's I would eat it because thing. I literally eat anything I want now. And that's yeah. wild to say. But if I want it, I will eat it and allow myself to have it because I trust myself. I have a... So yesterday I went on this fast food show and it's like a funny comedy show and I go, they're like, why are you here? And I go, I wouldn't have been here a year ago. I have to say I'm uh, recovered from, an, I'm in recovery for an eating disorder and I can only now allow myself to have fast food because I, it was the devil to me. It was like poison. You could have never got me to eat a chicken nugget. I mean, I'm vegan, so they had vegan ones. But like eating something fried, I just would never eat it. I'm like, I'm so grateful that I get to be here now and do this. And I'm not going to starve myself today or tomorrow because I ate more fried yeah, food yeah. today. It's just all going to balance out. And I trust that I'm going to eat the right amount. And so what I did when I got into recovery was just become accountable for it and started taking pictures of my food and sending it to someone who would not judge me for it and just thumbs up it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll tell you, I thought I was eating eight protein bars a night. And then you start to see, and then you see the texts and the pictures that you're sending. And I was like, it's way more than that. And it's way weirder. There's a lot. And then I started to have it to document. Because you can set denial in. You can, you, you, can, can, like, you can think that you see your problem you and you don't. You can normalize the, I used to drive three times a frozen day. Frozen yogurt? To a frozen yogurt place on Olympic. I would do three times a day to Whitney. I'm such a Whitney. <laughs> Dude, How did we not you run taught me about their original frozen yogurt, the Big Chill. You taught me about that. Yes, because they had the zero calories stuff that made you be in fetal position because you would cramp up so bad and have diarrhea. I would be crying every night. I would always tell my boyfriend, I was like, I'm TFTF, too, f too full to fuck. Every night, I that's I wasn't having sex because I was too full from eating of like chemically two frozen yogurt. froyos with sprinkles that I would drive to two different locations because I didn't want them to see me get yep, two. That's what, that's what I would do. And or I, I'd go, you would lie and be like, oh, I'm getting a bunch for like, I have friends staying with me, so I'm gonna get a bunch frozen. to go so that I could like put You in go the into those places and I'm like, set up some chairs and, and let's you know start an eating crazy? disorder meeting they right all, now. By the way, all the people that work there, they know. I call these air foods. Anorexic foods are like popcorn, can, things that are just, you can binge on that don't fill you up. By the way, this was when I was doing something called fit modeling where just to pay for college where you'd like stand and they sew clothes on you. We would dip cotton balls in orange juice and eat cotton balls with orange juice. Or, like sugar free as orange a, juice? As a, what were you, no, are you I think kidding this was me? real. No, because we added up some what it sugar. Was like, you had just sugar so you wouldn't faint. Yeah, and then everyone would eat broccoli with no, um, with I nothing can't. raw broccoli. And then this girl that I fit model with came down from Baltimore and she slept in my, she was like a really good friend of mine. We slept in bed together. And both of us at like 2 a.m. woke up and for like an hour we're trying to see if the other, because we were both sleep eaters we'd wake up and like fucking tear 90 protein so we were both and then it was like uh she was like are you up and i was like yeah she's like what are you doing and i was like nothing i was just gonna like go get a water and she's like oh yeah i'd love to have water and we both like sleep ate binge together we had to go down to the 7-eleven under my building to buy more and it yeah, was like i had a partner in crime too so it was also it was so great like, to get one because it's such a it's such an it isolating like, disease then i was like oh you i'm never not have crazy so other people else. do this and then i was like off to the fucking races as soon as someone else is I found someone as sick as me oh my to best do friend the same in thing college. I was like we're just coping we're cool. it's like I didn't realize how toxic it was to find someone that could relate that could to be it. you could shoot up with what I needed was alley. someone to go this is wild and no one I, I and that's why I was screaming it beforehand I was so in need of help I was talking about it all that I was very honest I thought I was being honest about what I was doing with food and like being like I want to change it I don't know what to do but when I first when I started to document it and send it to someone that just wouldn't judge it she just thumbs up it like cool eat that like it would be like I would seriously have like eight protein bars as I'm laying in bed on my lap with like the you know those smart sweets that are like 90 calories and two um, grams yes, of sugar yes yes I yes. would eat like four bags of those gummy worms like yes yes and the constant like Amazon packages ma being mailed to the club that I'm performing in so that when I get there I have my certain protein bar otherwise what yeah. am I gonna eat yeah it's just exhausting oh, but yeah. I just started yeah. seeing this and I'm like I'm 36 living at home with my parents and like what is going on like I have to do something and then I just took a chance that maybe this lie I'd been telling myself my whole life of I can't eat three meals a day. I can't eat normally because I'm different. I will get obese. I will get fat if I eat normally. By the way, I, I said this. I had this. I had a narrative too: is you can never eat fat. 
right? Because, oh, yeah. By the way, we're also fucking lied to and like marketed to and whatever. And I was like, if I eat fat, I'll get fat. So I would yeah, only like, eat like sugar free snack wells. Which that have so much sugar. Which is a billion sugar. I'm getting And cabbage. then we realized sugar is the problem. If I just had a fucking avocado on a piece of toast. I'd actually, my hair would grow in. I still in. have problems with that. Like, I still yeah. have aversion to things like fast food, like fried things. It's just like, I, it's so, they were so poisonous. It's, it's suddenly like, all of a sudden this world opened up where I'm like, oh, you can drink <laughs> There's so cyanide? so funny to me because it's like, you know, the idea that we can't, we're not supposed to eat a Chick-fil-A because of their homophobic vested interest. Yeah. That's the idea of like, I don't I'm eat, like, I don't oh, eat yeah. Chick-fil-A. Not because I'm like an advocate or no. an ally. I'm just, I don't, I have an eating disorder. Yeah, I'm not getting married until gay people can get married. Not because no man loves me and wants to marry me. And that most of the men I date are gay. Let me turn my <laughs> failure into being a hero. Yes, I yes. I refuse so to get married until. Yeah, veganism. That's an easy way to be restrictive. And so I always feel guilt about veganism because I get worried. People are like, she's using that to be anorexic. But I don't need to worry about that anymore because I was using it before. Even yeah, though yeah, it was yeah, yeah, well-intentioned. Okay. I was using it. It did support my anorexia, I, even things, though it was well-intentioned. Things, uh, when people criticize me about something, the only time it hurts me is when there's a little bit of fucking truth yeah, to it. Yeah, there's not truth to it anymore. I am vegan for the reasons I'm vegan, and I, it doesn't mean that I don't restrict or don't feel guilt when I overdo well, we it. we can or, say, though, we can say, you can, uh, like, in recovery, like, alcoholism, you never say, like, I'm fixed, or I'm not an alcoholic anymore. You say, I'm in recovery. You say, and with, um, from what I understand, an eating disorder uh, programs is not... I don't have an eating dis any disorder anymore. I just have disordered eating, and that's mm. something that's gonna not be fixed or healed. It's only maintained. Yes, you know? I believe so that. So I maintain. So it's like I can have disordered eating, and that doesn't mean I'm not ostensibly eating health. But I am thinking. I can't believe I'm fucking eating this. It's still taking up space in my brain, and I still. And now when it comes in, I go. That's so funny because it's all based off of like lies you've been told. Like there's no science that supports what you're scared of is gonna happen right now. You can't get. Obese tomorrow, and even if you are, you're going to be the same person, and but that's also, that will be you, another thing. But if you like, I mean, because I do know people that like have to lock foods in drawers, absolutely, and someone else opens the thing because it's a trigger food, and no, the, there are it's it is like there's a chemical dependency, and then there's a psychological coping component. and yes. your self soothing, and the idea is. You have to figure out what you're soothing from. That's the tricky thing and about And then you got to heal disorders. the wound that makes you want to self-soothe because actually disordered eating, any kind of it, binging, restricting, not about food. only eating something purple, whatever, that was the first um, anesthetic that kids, uh, children have access to before they have access to drugs, before they have access to alcohol, before they have access, food is something you can self-soothe with as a child. So it's like, it's the wound, it's the oldest oh, yeah. wound. It's one of the- And it's the cheapest- most legal drug that isn't regulated and you have to eat three times a day so imagine saying hey cocaine addict that keeps like doing it's cocaine brutal. and driving you have to do cocaine three times a day but like don't but do you mo can't too overdo much. it and like you just said about like i'm not gonna get uh, obese tomorrow if i eat today but like you know crack addicts can't go like if i do crack right now i'm not gonna die tomorrow but you right. eventually will yes that's why we don't do it today because then we'll do it tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day and then we'll build a case that like the way I'm doing it now, actually, I think it's different this time. But the fears around, not. like, I used to just think, like, if you eat a French fry, like, it's just, it, and it, for some people, French fry can lead to something that will turn, ruin their life. For me, I had to figure out, when I started talking to people with e eating disorders and different ones and how they're recovered, I learned there's just, everyone's different. It is, it's much more tricky than just getting sober because you still have to eat, like, just like you're saying. So yeah. for me, mine was like, okay, let me just experiment. I can always go back. Let me try to eat three meals a day that are like real meals and not like a little bit smaller than what someone – I always want the, the le least calories on the menu. If I'm dining with people, I always want to get the one that has the less amount of calories. And then, But also busy people who the – even you're like, I'm ready to eat healthy and balanced. Like who the fuck has time unless you subscribe to Daily Harvest? Who the fuck has time I mean, to put truly, three healthy meals together a day? It's, it's a full-time job. Well, I started like – planning them out so I started go so I went in a way of like and and guess what Whitney those meals yes I was doing three meals a day which I was like okay that's my rule for myself as long as I do that I'm abstinent from an eating disorder but then how do you define a meal so I met with a nutritionist but boy did I start doing little tricks where I would get yeah. the sugar-free almond butter or the what you know instead of what I really like wanted but that's and maybe, tricky because also sugar-free is like sure now yes sugar is but not great I wasn't making whether those you're sick or not so, let me, so it's tricky Okay, well, I would get, uh, you know, the 35-calorie rice cakes instead of the 40. 
I know and exactly which you ones know what you're talking about. I know, I know which ones you're talking about. So, and I still do. And you know what? Because I like them. By the way, there are. I don't like the apple cinnamon ones. I like the plain, no. and they are 35 calories. But it's like the I ones like that. that are 45 calories. Actually, they're 70. The ones you're talking about. No, I hate those ones. I'm talking about those Quaker oats, lightly mouth. salted yep. or no salt, 35 calories. They're great. They absorb tofu cream cheese in a great way. You put uh, peanut butter on top of that. Yes. Blueberries, delicious. It's just the consistency I like. But I have guilt about like it's the most. Cal- it's the, the I only know about it because I picked the one with the least calories yeah. but as I then I was starving I was then I then I was like kept eating into the I, I was like it's not enough I'm I am I am different I I can't have three meals a day I'm still gonna binge at night but then I looked at it and I go you're just not eating enough during you're still starving yourself yeah. so then I literally started waking up and to eating prove your narrative like five to six hundred calories when I wake up which is like I wouldn't let myself have that for my first dinner yeah. would that would like that would be breakfast 500 600 calories i would have just if i had to do that like back in the day if i had to like a, a important meeting and i have to eat breakfast my whole day would be ruined because i feel like i just threw in the towel early and i'm not strong like i gave up like it's like if you did, like started walking on a marathon in the first mile and you're like i wanted to run as far as i could and you i just and that's felt your like a perfectionism. fucking failure but let me tell you eating Three meals a day and breakfast. I am not, by no means out of the woods. And sometimes I'm just like, I don't like today. I did. I probably had 300 calories for breakfast because I just wasn't that hungry. And I'm. I'm and start- even to like be like, I'm. I. I don't. I'd rather eat it out. The fact that it's just the emotional energy that it takes to do something when you just see someone like like picking up a thing and eating it, like doing what they're doing. You're like, I know the amount but of it's emotion. Becoming that real estate for me. is so exhausting. It's becoming that for me. And yesterday was the first time I saw it. I turned down. I turned down hot ones. You know that show, Hot Ones? I turned that fucking juggernaut of a PR move down when it was early on before it was what it was, but it was still because like- Because you didn't want to have to Because I didn't camera. want to eat. I was, in, on, I was on Quest Bars at that time in my life, and it wasn't a brownie Quest Bar, and I knew, and I just didn't want to eat those. And they were like, they'll make them vegan, and I'm just like, it's it, the breading, the, like, the sugar and the sauces, like, and- I, that that still bugs me to this day that I my eating disorder was taking from my career. And I mean, I was fainting on stage. I wasn't I wasn't happy. I was always hungry. But yesterday on this food show, I, it didn't even occur to me to not do a show about fast food, which was literally arsenic to me for mm-hmm. the past twenty years or so. Like fast food is just like you can't have it anymore. It's like a like I was an alcohol like made that rule for yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah. And so yesterday when I I didn't even plan on saying like saying anything about my eating disorder on the show but I was like I started talking I go what's your history of fast food I was like I loved it as a kid and I it's the devil to me now and I go and I go I never let myself have it I'm excited to be here and I go actually it's only the devil to me because I was anorexic Mm -hmm. I almost died from it and it became like I literally thought it was poison and I've never recovered from that view of it and today is the first time since I've been you know recover recovering from an eating disorder that I'm eating like fast food because I don't usually crave it. Mm-hmm. But the whole, and I was a little bit worried the whole day, like having to be on this food show. It was so funny, Whitney. They were all like, you're the fucking best. You eat everything. And I go, what? it wasn't a lot of food. I go, who the fuck does this show? Like I go, you've had on so many slithers. Everyone just takes a bite and is able, they go, the chefs were like, it's it's annoying because people will take one bite and go, I don't really like, and I was like scooping it all but up. But we know what they're in. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Yes, but that's the thing. That's that's the norm. And yeah. and I go, it should be the norm that someone can finish three bowls of food. Where I, I didn't eat lunch either because I wanted to be hungry enough for the, the meals. And it was like, it just was wild to me that I've now gone from, and I felt a little bit insecure that I was like, everyone was like, she can eat. And I'm like, I don't, I always was the girl that, was skinny and well, like I don't I restrictive. Get, I get and shame like, about I, eating too much because I want. I think people are going like, oh, she's pretending she eats a I lot. Me too. Me and like, too. and she's gonna go throw this up. Like she's trying to be the cool fun girl. And I'm oh like, my god, no. that's why I was eating so fast. I was like, I was just so nervous about the fact that they might be judging me. That I'm probably start. I'm yeah, you probably already right think I'm anorexic. Like, I'm gonna yeah, prove so, that you're uh, wrong. And you you're like, think that because I used to do that. And in the reality, no one's thinking about you. No They're just shooting is. their show. They're ju- no one's thinking. They're worried. About I their wish own they were because I would have gotten help sooner if people pointed no out more. No one cares. No one cares. No one's like, let's all talk about this one thing that like no we think about all the time. So we assume everyone else. 
It's like Georgia. Yes. My therapist always says, she's always like, we, you obsess over wh- what people think about you until that you realize they're not. I know. And they're that's thinking the about thing. themselves and their insecurities. You fucking narcissist. Like it's, it's um, Sarah Silverman, I think uh, pointed this out once the idea. Well, it's a big thing we say in 12 step programs of um, uh, like Sarah said some one time when people, I hate myself. I hate myself. You're still just talking about yourself. It's still narcissism. It's myself, myself, yes, myself. Yes. And how in 12 step programs, it's these, this balance between self loathing and narcissism, which is like, I'm a piece of shit. shit in the that's center the center of the, the universe. universe. It's yes. the best. And one thing I just want to say, because I think it's important, like, this is an adage that like helped me a lot in terms of like, I know the things that I won't be able to stop if I start them. I can put a drink down, fucking no problem. I, yeah, you whatever know. Whatever it was with edibles, like, that was just a thing I could not stop. My, the, I wrote you. a whole fucking book about the eating disorder stuff. So I don't want to repeat yeah, yeah, myself no. of just how, what I did. I, yeah, uh, I love ACA, like just that program, like help me and whatever, a lot of other things. But I, um, I basically, <laughs> I feel like my workaholic addiction, uh, eclipsed my eating, uh, shit because I couldn't work, you as, couldn't hard. work as hard. So I was like, fuck it. I'm just gonna do whatever I want. That's I, I need loved. to be able to make all this money. When Taylor Swift, uh, got, uh, recovered from her eating disorder, or I don't know what she found, but like, she obviously was like very thin during a time in her life. And then now it looks like a, a woman that she's now uh, she's put on weight, but like she acknowledged in her documentary, she was like, I just thought you were supposed to at the end of a arena show feel like you wanted to die. Like I didn't know it was because I was malnourished. And like she's like, now I'm like, get done with these. I still have energy. And it was like, yeah, you just and, and I when think you and I bet she's a workaholic, too. I bet she was like. This is actually, the, being skinny isn't helping my career enough more than it's hurting it. And not that that, she probably wants to, for her own well-being. I realize But like, when it affects your work, when I started fainting on stage, I was like, okay, I got to start eating. Jesus Christ. <laughs> when you start eating after that, it, you're like, oh my God, you have a bagel and you're like, I feel like I'm going cocaine. And you're like, no, that's just energy. Everyone gets it's to feel crazy. like that. crazy. But um, the one thing that this helped me just, like platitudes, adages, aphorisms, like they do help me. Something that's like smart and catchy and like, like just perfectly succinctly, like and memorably says something. So if I know, if I text this guy, uh, he's going to text back. I'm like, this, I'm just going to send those one text to say, I'm done with you. And then he's going to text back and I'm going to fucking, now I'm really, like I know that texting this one ex, mm-hmm. one text mm-hmm. will be two years of my life if I'm lucky. Right. And the it's, but I can text other people and not respond all the time. This one person I know. That is your. It is one too many, edible. a million not enough. Hmm. One too many, a million not That's enough. That's the way I am with pot now. Like I'm waiting for a bottom with it. And my know therapist what yours keeps going. Is. They keep going. Why do you want a bad bottom? I go because honestly, my bottoms aren't ever that bad, and I'm just not right. I'm not right. And, and you know what? With we pot- need a lot of proof. Brains like we need. It. Some people need a lot of proof. Oh, I, you don't have enough proof. Yet. I don't. Yeah, I'm not you done don't with have my data. And like you have. I'm to, Jane Goodalling myself, and I'm hiding out in the woods, and I'm watching my behavior with the pot. I'm keeping. I'm putting up a system where I don't get to hide it anymore. I'm learning things. Do that you I learned. She was in there getting high with the, the yeah she the was p- working she, Jane Goodall was observing the 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 chimps she hated smoking chimps. weed she just needed to smoke that's weed. why they were ripping off people's faces go, it made them aggressive had, it processes had, different she had to go to the woods and then she's like hey she was so stoned she was like hey guys you can like read and write huh the, yeah, the, she, <laughs> all she, I her, bet Jane Goodall fucking gets down we now take another jarring startling break big pivot to talk about our new sponsor, Ship Station. We are passionate about shipping our products to fans and Emily and Benton <laughs> made and. a video about our shipping department. Before Ship Station, things were really hard here at Whitney's. We had to work and work, shipping everything tirelessly, wondering when it would be over, when we could stop wiping tears and really start living. Packaging was just becoming too much. It was overwhelming, and we didn't know what to do. I mean, look at how hard this is. I can barely put this book in this envelope. It's really frustrating. For dinner, we did whatever we could to survive, living off scraps, making sure we could make it to the next day to ship our books. It was really difficult, but together, me and Emily made it through. Sometimes we would get eggs. Emily didn't like that. Oh my god, Benton. Oftentimes we get an extra blueberry and we get really upset about it because it's unfair only one of us gets it. Other than that, we just spend our time reading the Bible, trying to make the best of the situation we were in. Every night we wondered, will this be our last night? Will we wake up to an easier shipping situation? And some of us did. 
ShipStation is a dream come true. It's the number one choice of online sellers. No matter how I sell, ShipStation funnels all my orders into one simple interface that I can manage from anywhere, even my cell phone. I'm so thankful to have a cell phone now. I bet if we had a cell phone, we could have saved Benton. He could have made it. I know he would love ShipStation. Emily! Oh well, whole new world. Oh my god. You should see the the amount of footage I have of Emily gagging over that egg. Astronomical. Yeah. All right, well, we'll have to put that in for, I don't know, our my, next... My only fans. No, our next Blue Chew ad. If this didn't work for you, <laughs> if Emily gagging on an egg doesn't get you an erection, I don't know what will. Ship more in less time for a lot less money. Just use my offer code Whitney to get a 60-day free trial. That's two months free of no hassle, stress-free shipping. Just go to ShipStation.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the page and type in Whitney. That's shipstation.com. Enter offer code Whitney. Make ship happen and don't take ship from anyone. And now we take a break from doing ads to do another ad. But before I get into that, I have questions, Benton and Emily. Why, why aren't you two dressed up like the best fiends characters this week. I thought we were going to do that every week. You dress up like the slug, you dress up like the ladybugs, just like you can't possibly be done with playing the fun, engaging, casual, mobile puzzle game. We are not. We took it to a whole new level. Yeah, we would never be done. There's only one place left to go. Only, only fiends. fiends. Do you love Best Fiends, the matching puzzle game with over 100 million downloads and over thousands of fun puzzles to solve, free to download? Best Fiends. The Match 3 or Casual Mobile Puzzle Game, Best Fiends. I can't put it down. I'm obsessed. It's fun and engaging. Best Fiends. Casual gameplay that fits perfectly into your life. Do you enjoy Best Fiends? Collectible characters, unlocking new worlds, and making 30 minutes feel like 30 seconds? Do you love slugs, bugs, strawberries, mushrooms, water droplets, flowers, and unlocking new characters? I play so much Best Feeds. I'm on level 69. But do you ever want to take a break after playing Best Feeds all day and leveling up your bugs and defeating your slugs? Then come on down to Only Fiends. Tonight, come have some XX extra fun on this special version, Only Fiends. Are you ready for a sexier side of Best Fiends? Then join us at Only Fiends. Best Fiends free to download. Only Fiends, only on Good For You. Only Fiends is not associated with Best Fiends in any way, shape, or form. It's a completely made up Good For You production and is not at all endorsed by Best Fiends, which is a wonderful game. We're so sorry you had to see this. Please go download Best Fiends or free today. Only Fiends. Once again, Only Fiends is not at all associated with Best Fiends in any way, shape, or form. It is completely made up good for production and is not all endorsed by Best Fiends, which is a wonderful game. We're so sorry you had to see this. Please go download Best Fiends for free today. Only Fiends. There's a first for everything, and today I can honestly say I am speechless. You have two options. You can either subscribe to our Only Fiends, or you can download Only Best Fiends. One of the two. I'm still without speech, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to charge ahead anyway. And find a way to tell Wait, you, you guys. you said you're without speech. Did we fix you? I'm speechless. I'm speechless um, from that sizzle, from that hot sizzle. Uh, so you can download Best Fiends. You can download this. You can only get Best Fiends, Only Fiends here on Good For You. That is an exclusive. But if you go get Best Fiends, the five-star rated puzzle game, you'll be able to understand their Only Fiends better. So it's where, you know what I'm saying? It's like when I mm -hmm. saw the second Fifty Shades of Grey and yeah. not the first, I was like, what's happening? Like, I can't follow this. You'll you be able have to, to know the backstory. You have to know the backstory, exactly. So why don't you go and download the five-star rated puzzle game Best Fiends free today on the App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R, Best 
fiends. But only fiends is with the R. <laughs> <laughs> The one thing that I want to say that really, you know, some of these things that you get when you're recovering, like you just are like, well, that's it. That cracked it open for me. I heard something so great the other day. And this is why I'm approaching it with food and with because I still have little things with food that I'm like, I want to starve myself or I want to exercise tomorrow because I overeat today. And by the way, anything about like starving yourself applies to overeating and like uh, stuff. So this is like I hope people in this conversation are like, this is only about this one. No, you're overeating, by the way, because you're starving yourself in other ways and or or because it's an emotional thing. like it it's be, a life it's a problem. Spectrum. It could be you have nine cups of coffee a day, but everything else is normal in the way that you eat, or you only eat it can, it's in your so car, or crazy whatever it is. How many eating disorders there are out there, and how or disordered eating? You can also say I have disordered eating if it sounds. It should, but when I, I see someone, someone who's obese, I know exactly. I don't know the, exactly their what they're going through, but I know that I have the same disease as them. It just manifests differently. All I know is that when I was anorexic. At the worst of it, I did get treated differently. I, 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 that's why I'm a comedian. I always tell the story, but I'm a comedian because I was, I, str- I looked like a legit Holocaust victim when I went to my freshman year of college. I didn't have any friends. The only way to make friends was to be larger than life with personality to make them forget that I looked so fucking frightened. I mean, look, I look at pictures and I'm like, how did anyone let this girl walk into sc- like go? I mean, it's wild that I survived. I'm um, thank God. But the only reason I survived it was because I discovered comedy and I was like fuck, I gotta, like, survive to, like, I'm good at something finally, other than starving myself. But the thing is, I really relate, like, I've learned through recovering from an eating disorder and really, like, going into it that um, you think that an anorexic and an obese person are, like, couldn't be more opposite. Mm -hmm. It is the exact same thing. And let me tell you, the pendulum will swing. I remember when this eating disorder lady, before I was going to college, sat my mom down and said, Nikki um, should not go to college. She's gonna die. And um, she, I remember she goes, what if your roommate's skinnier than you? And I was like, there's no way. Because I was like 90 pounds or so. Like I was like, mm-hmm. like. This is a little tidbit that I learned that I really think will help everyone start going with addiction because it's a food related thing, but I'm really applying it to pot. Because I have a lot of guilt around pot and that's why I like to talk about it so much because I'm struggling with it. But I heard a story one time of someone with an eating disorder that is recovered and she was talking about getting cookies, which were her fucking alcohol, mm-hmm. right? D- shouldn't have them probably no probably a red light food in terms of like i shouldn't have that she had them she was getting them for a party and she's driving home did you say a red light food yeah is that a i don't it's know it's a term. term yeah it's like a, that means? that means like can't have it ever Alar- again like a lot uh, so, uh, don't bo- have it never again so in some in some programs you would say bottom line like my bottom line is i never i never right. do this thing i never have sex unless they're my boyfriend i've never okay so red light food. red light food yellow light food is like Listen, like maybe like I'm not going to go buck wild, but we know the foods where you go. You just can't have one. Yes. Yes. Got it. And thinking about a life without those foods. I'm sure anyone that's hearing this is like, I'm not going to give up that thing that I like to be like. That's interesting. Just, so a red light behavior. OK, so sorry. Just yeah. Wanna, and I behaviors. Just make sure. I have red light behaviors. As well. I, I think it's good that people know this because it's like there are certain you might be hearing us going. I can have one protein bar and put it down, but I can't have one milkshake. But like, but you could also hear so- that and go. I'm never going to put down a milkshake but, and then you're turning off the podcast, but, hearing, but just wait. Hearing, hearing other people's uh, bottom lines or red light things are fascinating to me because we get to make them specifically for ourselves. And a lot oh, of mine people, are so weird. Because No, but I love sharing I them. love them. A lot of people go into uh, 12 step rooms and they hear someone going, oh, my bottom line is this. My, and they go, well, I don't belong here. It's like, no, 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 no. And sometimes you hear it and you go, Your, I didn't even know that was a thing um, you could not do. And I go, this? I need that. I And they can be as simple as, I don't go on Reddit from four to five in the morning. Whatever. Yes. But uh, when I went to a, I went to a Workaholics Anonymous meeting once, it was kind of hilarious because everyone was twenty minutes late, <laughs> Get <laughs> rushing from out. work. Everyone was on their phone. Many of the people were like known people because they're overachieving people. And yeah, like, it was like literally <laughs> I, two of them. I'm like, oh my god, I love your work. No. Ah, no! Keep doing it. I, I want love, more. I love your work, which the worst thing you can say to someone who's trying to work less. And then um, oh one God. person's bottom line in their workaholism was when I have to pee, I'll get, I will not hold my pee. Oh, wow. Which is like a thing that I realized that I totally do. If I'm like working on something, I have to pee. I just fucking, I'm like, I'll do. I'll and it almost makes you feel good because you're like, there's like, when I would feel hungry, I would feel alive from it. Or a sense like of pain. like a, a sense of something like, letting me know I'm, I'm doing so, I'm doing I'm something so harder hard that I'm not even gonna fucking I'm fighting pee. through pain like I'm tough 
But also, I'm better. But you're, it's making you distracted. You're and not, it's it, ruining your bladder yeah. and going to cause you incontinence And by the later. way, no one, like, after you, like, don't pee for three hours, no one, like, shows up with a check being like, you held your pee the longest. Like, who's it's, this for? That's such an interesting one. And, like, yeah, one of those light bulb moments where you go, oh, my God, I didn't even realize I was doing that. But you see it. So this girl was talking about it. She was bringing home cookies for a party or for a thing next day. And she, she was like, I'll have one, you know, like we all do, the one. Then it's, okay, two is fine. Then three. It turns out to be a row, right? She sees the row and she's disgusted with herself. She ate a sees a row? The row. She ate the entire row of Oreos. Oh, the first row. The sleeve. The sleeve, yes. She And there's a bunch more, but she ate the whole row. Way more than she wanted to have then. And she's like, fuck, I'm such a fucking fat, lazy ass. I wasn't supposed to eat that row. How am I even going to explain this disgusting? The admonishment that went on for the, the row, guess what that turned into? The bag. So if she would have just let herself off the hook for the row... The bag, she was already, she was already stopped at the row and, and stopped to beat herself up for the row, which then which turned into the bag. bag too. The bag wouldn't have happened. Why? It's already if over. If you would have just let yourself go for the row. So addicts, when I smoke pot. Addicts do not like to cut our losses. What, we like to make our losses more extreme. But what, what is doing that is the self uh, abuse that you put on yourself. Mm-hmm. When, so when I smoke pot and I don't go, the other day I've, I've been playing guitar and I always record myself when I'm practicing because I just want to see my progress, which it, I haven't seen it, but I was watching the other day. I left, I suddenly left my computer on and you see me, I hear me like <laughs> put down my guitar and I'm like, my shoulder hurts. I'm like, like in my room, it's kind of cute to hear yourself like be funny. You're like, oh my God, I'm cute. Like cute and funny. Like I'm adorable. Like I love myself. I am lovable. I was being so cute. I was like, my shoulder's numb. And I was in the, I could hear myself in my bathroom. I remember what I was doing. Cause then I walked back to my laptop to go bring it into the kitchen. That's also pure inner child shit. Yes, that's I was a little child. girl. There's a poster of Taylor Swift on the wall that I put up because I haven't gotten it framed yet that I literally put up with tape. And I'm like, fuck it. I'm not going to wait to be an adult. I want a Taylor Swift poster on my wall that inspires me. I'm putting it up. So they're in the back background you see a Taylor Swift poster and I'm like my 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 shoulder is numb my shoulder (laughs) is numb then you hear me go like you hear this take in a breath hear me light light pot I like you know take a hit and then I in my head I remember going you shouldn't be smoking pot right now and then I just go remember the 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 sleeve you just ate a sleeve Mm -hmm. of of cookies you didn't want to do that right now you have to get on a call in a minute why'd you do that I thought of it as the sleeve of cookies And, and I went from going you, sh- you did it. You broke the seal. Now just have it all. I go, I picked up my laptop. I'm going in the, I picked up my pot too. And I go, and you hear me go, I'm grateful for pot to help me in this moment where I feel anxious. I'm grateful for my hands. I'm gra- I start doing a gratitude list as yes, I'm walking. Yes, yes, But I, instead of going, I literally stopped myself. I was so proud of myself watching myself do this because I went from, I go, I'm, I said, I'm grateful for pot. I'm grateful for that thing that I just felt guilt about. I'm so happy that it helped me in this moment that I needed it. I don't need more. And because I was kind to myself, I didn't smoke more that time. And sometimes you do smoke more, but it's so much. You of, like gave yourself a hug to be like, I, you're just, f- I forgive myself. So when I just think that when I think it could help people because it's helped me when you have that first sign of you disgusting, fat piece of shit, you lazy or, drug it, addict, or whatever you it is, d- you dummy, drunk you texted asshole. That guy or you st- it can be about anything. Yes. Say, try to laugh at it and try to go. That is so sweet that that is. You're only trying to do the best for yourself. Like, I, when I first realized, like, if I wish my ass looked different, I really do. I have the flat ass, and I I wish that it looked like yours. You know, I if I could snap my fingers, it would, right? Mine? Yes, but just stay, stay with me. Uh, you have an amazing, amazing tuchus, and I was uh, last time I got to see your boobs. This time I was just like watching your ass as you showed me around. Your you're like in the arch ceiling, and I'm just like looking at your butt, being like, <laughs> it's so good. What does she do that I'm not doing? I. I, I wish I could have your butt, and if I could set my fingers and have it, I would. But all this that it would take for me to have that butt, I can't do it. I can't. I don't want to do the the classes. I don't. I don't want to do it. And I'm not actively choosing to. Have, people always think, well, I'm lazy, so I'm actively choosing to be a lazy, uh, and I'm fat because I don't run. It's like you. If you could step your fingers, you would be skinny. There's something going on that you can't, you can't do it right now. And be okay with that. You can't do it. You're not trying to be fat right now. You're not trying to be an addict. You're trying no your best. No one wakes up and says, today I'm going to be an addict that sabotages my entire life and hurts the people around. And no one. It took me two years in Al-Anon to realize that someone else's addiction wasn't a personal attack on me. 
because I had my own addictions, et cetera. And I, and so it's like, th that took me so long to yes. learn. And what you're saying is also reminding me to say, oh, Just, this is, when people are like 12 step programs are stupid. Yeah, we all agree. No one wants to go to a 12 step program. I mean, I know Helena Bottom Carter in like Fight Club, like would go for her or whatever. No one's like, I really want to, for four days a week, bring coffee to an abandoned church and sit with a bunch of fucking people that no one like, want. It, you do it because you, you know that what works about it is in that moment where you say, I'm really thinking about doing heroin. I, I fucking texted my ex today and that was a relapse for me and now I'm gonna, you get to go into a room and, and that exact moment you're talking about, where you you can have eat, compassion where you can fork and you can say and acceptance i'm going to I, I i had that fucked up thought i hate myself i could either go recoil deeper into my disease to anesthetize that shame which is the which keeps compounding and compounding because i'm keeping it secret or i can have smart feet and get in the fucking car and go to a place mm. where i go you guys i want to eat that second sleeve of cookies and everyone goes Oh my God, you're amazing. You fucking admitted that because that is the bravest shit to fucking do and a bunch of strangers and then everyone is going like, I want to do that. Yeah. And then you get to dissipate the shame, which takes away the need to hurt yourself again. It's that's why absolutely it works. Absolutely getting rid of the bullying yourself. Having that really, everyone says, be nice to yourself. Talk to yourself like a friend. It's not that easy. Not that easy. It takes so much goddamn practice. That's why I was so excited that I heard myself do it in that moment. I was like, it's finally clicking for you. You don't have to be, you have to be reminded of it later. And it doesn't always click. But when I just can stop and say, Nikki, you did go on Bill Maher and you said a joke that was that you had a punchline for that you didn't get to. Why did you tell that joke out of all the ones that you had planned to talk about? Why did you do that dumb one that's only going to be misunderstood because you didn't get to finish your point? And then I would say, you why? You were thinking to do that joke. Why did they? Why did you sneak, you idiot? Why did you say that joke? You had rehearsed what you were going to do. Why in that moment? Because you know what? That was all I had in the moment. I used to fucking spiral after every appearance of like, yeah. why did I say that? And this is not just podcasts. If you like have, uh, you know, experiences, why did I say that to my sister? Why did I say that to the person at the grocery store? Why was I talking about my bra? I went on, why would I mention I went on, my bra I went to that on, woman? I went on Prozac for that. But, 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 but that calms but, down that voice of admonishment. You didn't want to talk about your bra to that neighbor that was like kind of creeped out by the fact that you mentioned your bra, whatever it was. You didn't want to do that if you could have chosen differently, but you didn't. But Forgive also, yourself. But also, there's a. I remember I went to um, Dr. David Agus, who has been on this podcast. Oh, yeah. Who I should the be brain doctor who, oh, he no, was the no, one that no, made that. An, that's Andrew Huberman. No, 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 no. He uh, Agus does a lot of stuff of like brain imaging to oh, yes, see if, if the blood flow to the brain. Okay, got it. To make sure like pretty much everything is like your blood in your brain. He's just like the, the cartoon Marvel. Uh, uh, Justin Bieber's doctor guy. Yeah. Who does everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. He's like the guy. And he. Um, I, I had to mute him because he was making me feel bad about smoking pot because <laughs> he was like it makes Maybe less you blood to your brain Maybe i should. You should feel bad i need that Maybe information you need to unmute it and i will unmute him when i'm ready to have more to, as to, long as to hit I'm that unmuted, bottom i don't care yes you um, are it's a, it's you are you've been busy girl <laughs> that is literally like i must say when people are like when do you know you've made it and you're like when i hosted this or when i got this special it's like when nikki glazer oh my god me. you're so funny <laughs> and like beautiful i just am captivated by i love your clips and it's i i like I really love you and I am so, everyone wants to, everyone likes to talk shit right in this business and you were someone that was very easy and is still very easy to talk shit about because yeah. you are so, right now, more than ever, you are so yourself, you don't give a fuck. Like you just, you literally don't give a fuck. You are not trying to dress for anyone else. You're, at least that I, I can love, tell about. By the way, I love that. Uh, that is a compliment. I know it is, sounds like an insult. But, but it's so funny to be like, you don't even care what you wear. No, you that's not care. true. But, I, but you know you're what I'm saying. You're the hottest person I it's know. So and you've that's... never looked better. That like, yes. It, and it's that a did funny sound thing. Like, no, it's a, it's, it was I, absolutely like, I you can just wear anything. I just used to do a joke about that where someone come in and be like, I just love that you like, don't even like care what you look like. I'm like, I've been in makeup for two hours. No, you were in hair and makeup, but like you are in that because you know what looks good on camp. You know how you want to look. It, and maybe no, I'm not even right. the only reason I got hair and makeup today, or I got makeup and whatever, is because I know this is going to be a big episode. Oh, I I'm, I give fucks. I you do give fucks, but this is the thing: is like people want to people. I'm not, and I, I wouldn't even name names, but like you were discussed a lot in the comedy community because you are so successful, and because now this Whitney that we all we all got used to talking shit about the Whitney that seemed to try to get everyone to like her and was doing a great job of it mm -hmm. for, for you know, until you just it was exhausting. Cho chose a different lifestyle. Exactly. But now you're Whitney that people are going, she's a little, whoa, it's a lot. It's because she's actually 
operating from a place of doing whatever, saying whatever. No, 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 no. Here's why it's a lot. Here's why it's a lot to people that. Because I'm now talking for three hours a fucking week. You used and you're to see me on TV once a year. It's a lot. Like, what do you mean it's but a lot? Like, that's No, I think is. it's a lot because it's like you want blue hair and so everyone thinks that somehow like a, a, the state of your mental health. Actually, that to me is like someone and not no one's saying that. I'm hold just on, saying like decisions I, like no, that that I women know, make everyone, and people every, freak no, out. People want to say I mean, they I were know like, you got blue that. hair, she's crazy. I was so much fucking crazier when I was a brunette. I know that's My what I'm saying. My entire 20s. It's for me that I look at you and I'm so glad to be friends with you because I can read through the bull. You're not fixed. I have But you're just someone that is free. You, by the way, you didn't like me when I was a you didn't like me when I had blue hair. You didn't like you're all oh, you never liked me. It has nothing to do with my hair changing. It has nothing to do with anything. Hearing that you might be uh difficult to work with, calculating, you know, the same kind of thing. Like you're very Taylor Swifty, like where people want to pin I your am. success on calculation, which like, oh, she f- had a forethought and decided like, to do something. I am apps if if that calculating means calculating like, is a good word. <laughs> I know, I like no, but like we need calculus. Women that are like ambitious or calculating know, means- is like gross, and it's like doesn't mean I don't have talent it's or work hard. It's thirsty for fame. And but by the way, maybe like you it. should be more calculated. Why the fuck are you? It, to me, Calculating it was, is just a plan. By the way, we should all be more calculating comedians. Calculate. Calculate yes. more yes. so that you have fucking health insurance. Like, yes. I'm sorry. I had $7 and I had five family members with no health insurance. I had to be calculated. Yes. I had no choice or I wouldn't be able to do this. So it's like, like, like let's take the stigma off planning two days in advance like let's and by the way at that time guess what part of being successful at that time maybe it's still this way yes i had to calculate and introduce myself and say hi and be like that's what you had to do yeah and it worked so i like it is what it is i i i it, i'm yeah i'm not saying that that now i calculate even a negative now i calculate absences instead of presences but at a time where i had to like like hang out at the comedy store for four hours so that I could fucking get on stage or I had to hang out at an open mic so that then I could be on it. You calculate absences? I more now try to cap- calculate absences, which is like, I just think that, I, I think I just kind of realize like just with like, Stuff now people have access to you all the time. They can go on YouTube and watch. Oh, you calculate when I'm going to go away as opposed to when I'm going to be out there. You can be overexposed right now just because someone's in a wormhole of all your videos. I know that's the biggest fear. It's like it's like I want to be able to do everybody's podcast. I want to, but I I calculate absences that are just like I don't want to go to a podcast and tell us like if I've already. I have nothing to say right now. I'm not going to promote start doing right those. now. Yeah. Like, I just got to do less in general because I'd rather just the stuff I'm proud of be out there and not be like. Like just doing talk shows for that because because a lot of talk shows want to have us on all the time because we're funny and we're always gonna nail it. I know it. I say yes to fucking you can't join Rivers, but it's also it's also you're getting paid twenty million dollars. I'm getting paid. I'm probably losing money doing this, and I'm gonna put a day of work into it, and it doesn't really benefit me that much. I'm gonna spend that time putting work into my own podcast. On I my, do my show. Why am I? Why I only am I do doing- stuff I want to do now, like I because it's, it's truly gonna be fun, or it's gonna be like it has a big enough following that yeah. it like justifies it. Or but otherwise, I tell people I go, you don't have enough followers, and it's I don't have enough time, and I'm sorry to say that I'm gonna be honest with you. It, but you're. It's, but what I will say is, or I'll go on ones that don't have followers. I go because I like you so much, and I just want to hang out with you. You know? But yeah, totally. But there are things like in terms of social media, I am very calculated about it. I used to be like I you don't sh- give, it's I don't a bad give word. a fuck I'm but that was a word that got tossed around about you that could dismiss your talent because she's just she uh, works hard sh- yeah it, it, the work hard thing I know you you have issue with too because I hate that too when no, people, people go you know what Nikki I'm glad you got that because I said to that person she works so hard and I go it's just such a, it's, it's, like, it's okay, such so, a dismissal okay. Okay, but you know so, what it, so, that is so, what I do I have a talent for working hard so if, look into it so if working really hard makes you me how come you don't do it Exactly. So, so why the like, talent is working hard? Like, by the it's way, it's like, and I'm bringing up, I because I do believe that most talent is just when people hard work. like Dane Cook isn't funny. All right, what this was when he was doing arenas, it was like massive. Yeah. So when people go, Dane Cook isn't funny. It's like Dane Cook's well, not funny. He's Get not funny, and he's making thirty million dollars a year. So what's your excuse if you are funny? <laughs> What, do you know what I'm saying? I'm like, what, where is No, because people are dumb and they want things that aren't funny and my, uh, that's their excuse. Fine, but I know what I'm doing when I say shit like that and I'm trying to make myself feel better. And so to me, I remember, and Neil Brennan said this to me once in the hallways ages ago. He goes, uh, we were talking about like managers or something and he goes, if I was a comedy manager, I would just go into comedy clubs and ask the comedians who they hated (laughs) and then sign that person. That's such that's great. That's it. So I'm like, it's, to me, and then I I'd learned, ask the comedians who they love, and I'd hire that person to write. Then I learned. <laughs> then I learned if comedians hate me, I must be doing well. So when I felt it and I felt that hatred, negativity, I was like, oh, I must be doing well. And guess what? Y'all fucked up. 
and made me stronger also. Yeah. So I, it's like if I can go into a fucking comedy hallway well, just, knowing all these comedians fucking hate me and then still do my job and drive home, like you guys toughened me up <laughs> because later I had to fucking run a show dude. and deal with shit like that. So you accidentally made me stronger. Well, trying you're welcome. to take me down. Because I so talked thanks. a lot of shit about you. You you are welcome. I What's I, the main what was it is it was just that you were that you were calcul- like it was all about like she doesn't tries deserve this. She tries too hard. She just she's uh she's just smoothed her way. You know like all those things. like that's yeah. kind of the I just uh, I just Which, I wanted to hear anyone say anything about you that I could use as a way to realize why you had things and I didn't because it, and it and it couldn't be because you're funnier or because you uh, when it, in reality me getting something I don't deserve means oh my god then I'm gonna get twice as much as her because I do deserve it. Yeah, you know what I'm exactly. Saying? That would be the thing. It should make you go, holy shit. But she's just... I knew. And I knew the other exactly. Thing I just didn't. I don't. You were successful because you, I didn't have what you had. Like you're special. But I want to come down to you. Oh my god. But I also want to want to uh, 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 just the smoozing thing real quick, just because people like I think are think, thinking. Yeah, about tell this. me, tell and me what schmoozing. It 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 doesn't work. Like I, that I actually never did. Like I wanted to be seen by the people who, who needed to know I existed. And the art of seduction by Robert Greene. I did read it. I did absolutely stuff I saw in the book where it's like oh. you run into people and you like introduce yourself. And then I'm gonna kind of oh like I do know his wife. I'm gonna ask about his wife because I don't want him to think I'm flirting with him. Like I I was very calculated about being a young woman in Hollywood, uh, like having business relationships with men at 25. And not, I would like pretend I was engaged. I would like ask about the what. I would be right. like, you know, I would work very hard to make sure they didn't see me as a potential, like a person to prey on mm-hmm. and a businesswoman. And so like, I was very calculated do what I wore. you begrudge a I woman? I never dress sexy. What, do you begrudge a woman who does use that to get ahead? Not in the slightest. And sleeps with not someone to get a role. I don't either. Not in the slightest. Do whatever either. the fuck you want. As either. long as it's consensual, I don't care. Listen, but if, the you, most if you time, get the thing and then you bomb, you won't do it again. Just, like if you have the talent, if you get that role and then you get a- it doesn't work though. That's the thing. Exactly. That's what it is. If a director, if fucking directors would get me in movies in my 20s, I absolutely would have done it. I fucked way worse people than directors. I know. Like, I'm like, I'm the one running out fucking like, fucking like guys that live in their cars. Whenever so, someone, so for me, I'm yeah. like, I'm going to sleep with the wrong people in my 20s. If I get a fucking job and money out of it, why not pick a better oh, bad one? my God. But it doesn't work because, because usually it's like, Oh, I, I I've seen so many girls be like, I'm dating this director, and they're and it's like, no, they got you. Now they're gonna, do you know what I'm saying? And that's not how it works. You cannot go to a studio and say, I really want to hire my, my girlfriend. girlfriend. It's Actually, n- you're less likely to get hired if you're dating yeah. a director because they're like, well, she, she, they don't want to deal with that stigma. So that doesn't work. I'm not saying that it should, or, or I'm not. I don't have a judgment on. It. I'm saying what works and what doesn't. Take the emotion right. and the judgment and the sexism out of it. The same thing with like schmoozing. I learned like. It comes off desperate. You have to be... I didn't realize until I was on the other side of auditioning that when someone comes in and is like, hey, nice to meet you, and like wants your approval, it's so repellent. And is there I anything re- grosser to and, the hu- human race than someone who's desperate? Needy. It's the more people pleasing we are. It's like the more unattractive. It's like the irony is we're pushing the person away that we're trying to... And then I would look on... Uh, sheets of actors they give you a list of all the actors that are coming to audition you'd be like oh i saw her at that motorola party last night i'm like "Mm." it degrades you it degrades your value if you are too visible and around people too much because they're like well this person doesn't fucking work like you being enigmatic and like right which gave me the which gave me the freedom to go oh i don't have to fucking schmooze great i can just go fucking work and write scripts and learn and write jokes so So you saw that side of it and got to see that the you you were you you were someone to schmooze and you saw that the schmoozing didn't work on you and so you go, I'm going to hang that up. But I would have done it if it did. But yep. I think I w- it's important that people know that it doesn't. Right. So Because a lot no, of people are like, good. we need to network. No, 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 just work. Do not just network. Work. Just work. Networking. So true. Net- and be kind along the way because that, that to me is like, I can't believe people who can, who can be terrible people uh, and and be kind, still but work. not fake. Don't be fake. Don't be fake, but just be yeah. Don't, don't be just be honest. Yeah. But like I don't think. And by the way, in be, general, just talk less. Uh, <laughs> like we are the telling old, us. We are literally to talk the. Less. Oh, I know what I'm saying. Like in works, we are the only business where people just like are like hang out at parties that don't really employ each other, but could maybe like it's just like such a boundaryless shit show. I just want to say something really quick because before we have to go, just to wrap up the the thing about Dave because I do want to hear all the other shit you talked about mm-hmm. me and the I've not, you no. Know, I just want to say right now when so uh, so recently there was some someone I just could say was like planting your name in a way that was like 
I'll get Nikki to tell, like maybe it was someone I maybe talked to. Her, uh, like I can't even think of who it was because I don't remember. Because it was, it was just such a nice moment. It was someone that I probably would want to like me. Like in that moment, I have to stand next to them, so I want their approval. Mm -hmm. It would have been so easy for me to just go, yeah. Like if they want to talk about you, just go like nod my head and not feel like I was betraying you. But it's so nice, and it's only maybe because I have a career enough that I can take a stand. But I don't think that's it. Like I love being able to defend people or to say actually that's not what that person is at all and I know that from personal experience and here's why you think that and here's why that's not true and to have them never first of all talk like that uh, or try to plant that again but like I'm just such a I, I, in my life I've fucking swallowed so many times when I heard people talk shit about things that I care about and I just don't let it slide anymore and it feels great and it's not just you it's it's you know here's I would uh, I'm not telling you not to do whatever you want to do, yeah, do I'm not saying like I when deserve a gold star for defending all, you and by the way it does not happen often but there was just a chance that someone I but people know we're fr pr no friends now so they would do, but they, this person you, didn't know and let I was me like, tell you two things let, let me tell you two things number one when you when I hear there's someone at the at a comedy venue, a comic yeah. talking shit about me when I'm not even there, I'm like, you're killing it. Damn, exactly. Like my name came, comes up even when I'm not there. Oh, like, I, you know I, what I'm saying? That because I know what it means when a bunch of people talk shit about someone that you know. I know what jealousy looks like. Whatever. I'm not saying people are jealous of me, but like I, I'm sure they talked about ten thousand. I other talk about people. you on stage. I have this bit about you right now. It's so I because the the bit is I reveal it. I go, yeah, no thank. Or I go, thanks for that, Whitney. <laughs> and I and and everyone knows because I go, I asked a comic friend of mine this thing, and then I say the thing. <laughs> it's about what I think I talked about it on your show, but when. I said I was going to shave my head and you were like you look amazing do it and I'm like talking about how when you're and I go when I wanted to cut my bangs everyone all my friends were like are you okay but when I wanted to shave my head Whitney's like do it your bone structure you were just being nice but I'm like I go uh, Jess Switzer who colors my hair has a shaved head and is so fucking gorgeous and hot I, but in the joke, I will I'm be like, shaving my head very soon I wanted soon. to shave my head and Whitney's like do it and I go uh, you're a bad friend and I'm like <laughs> And like I go, I go, Whitney, you're a bad friend. Everyone laughs, and I go, and then I go, this whole thing, your bone. I'm like, this bone structure, shaved head, do it. And it's so fun to do you because I love that you're that famous, and uh, you know, if someone knows me, they know you, and it's just so fun to be able to take those things where it's like. It's I'm 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 doing a joke that sounds like I'm talking shit about or like because then I go into the so whole great. thing of like but if you really were you couldn't do the joke if we weren't real friends yeah and and, and can I say yeah, one more thing just, about this because I think this is impo an important tool that I use where if I want if someone wants to come to me and gossip about which is very often like people want to be able to go well Whitney said this and then use gossiping with me against me later to be like see she's an asshole so yep. I know exactly when I'm being oh, baited been... and I'm also just a like whatever i'm also a a well forgive that person they must be hurt they must be injured Same. like i always defend the people that people want to yeah. shit talk about me even if they fucking hurt me so um uh i'm a shitty person to gossip with but if someone comes up to me and is like hey so like nikki like you know like just trying to bait like let's yeah, do it like yeah. nikki Did you like see nikki's woo! latest post yeah just like, like that yeah whatever and instead of going what the fuck are you doing? Because that person is already, they're not going to hear what I'm saying because they already feel the need to gossip about somebody and they're shitty. So me saying this, now they just have ammo to go, Whitney's fucking crazy. She just yelled at me in the hallway. And so uh, my thing, the only thing I will say. Yeah, what do you do? Besides like ignore it and go, I can either say, mm, I don't focus that much on other people's Instagrams or whatever, like something passive aggressive and a little shitty. I normally go like, why do you feel the need to bring this up? That's good. Or what's going on with you that you're so focused on that? See, I wanted to go, I see why you would say that and think that because I once thought the same, or I, I once had a preconceived notion of someone that mm -hmm. I thought I knew because we were friends, but I've gotten to know her and can I just, and, and not even defend you, but be like, there are multi, this, we, we are all Whitney. And can I tell you something Whitney else? Whitney is me and y you are Whitney and we are all Whitney and she's just fucking honest and that's what I love about her and she can do whatever the goddamn fuck she wants and I'm gonna keep watching it and like I'm inspired by can it. Can I tell you something else? Yeah. This is the other thing. So let's um, uh, shit talk about Nikki Glaser to me. To talk about, about Yeah, like uh, gossip about yourself with me about Oh my God, did you see like we get it. Like you're what? single and sad and she's like so orange. She's like Sally Hansen in her arms. But we can see it sloughing off. Chill with the spray tans. Have you seen Nikki Glaser? She's like orange all the time. Dude, I don't know, but whatever she 
is doing is fucking working because she has a huge theater tour and she's hosting all these shows and she's that's hosting fuckboys. Like, whatever she's doing, I, I might start doing that then. Oh, that's really good. Do you know what I'm saying? Because there's also that. It's like, that's whatever. That's the spirit of what I, it's how working. I say. Because well, I like, just want to be around you and, maybe and you, become maybe, more. Maybe you, gossipy, shitty person. Maybe you should go get a spray tan. <laughs> maybe you should do whatever the fuck she's doing because it's obviously working. I do admire you and like look up to you I and I think you. you're so cool. And But today I was coming over like, Worrying about what I'm gonna wear is Whitney gonna be like your hair? What's this? Have what's I ever? This story? What? Oh, you girl, you were supposed to shave it. E- what's the story we're seeing Why here? Am I seeing You've it? done that to me before since we've been close friends again, and I was worried coming in. But like the thing is, I never. That's I. I have all the. I still have preconceived notions, and I get nervous to come over to your big house and like. I hope she likes me and thinks no, the that one I'm, thing I'm, I still wants say, to be friends with me. It's not about like you're not. The second are, I see you, there are times like Melissa Vias and your. This sounds like I'm an asshole. But when we, uh, she used to open for me on the road and we were in Vegas once and she's the most talented, like, you know, and she would do an impression of me on stage. It would destroy so hard that I couldn't follow it. <laughs> the real me. So, um, it was a tricky one. People would rather see her doing the impression than actually me showing up. I'd come out and they'd be like, mm, I'd have to call her back out. Like it was embarrassing. And so, uh, once oh my God, she you'd have like a Whitney off. Yeah, you'd like yeah. talk to yourself. Well, Is that went. fun? I'm like, can you just give her the check? Oh like, I don't God. deserve any of this. And um, she, uh, I only exist so that she can do the impression. Now I'm like, you know, irrelevant. But um, uh, she would, and she now, I have no idea how she dresses now, whatever. I know I dress in horse shirts and I'm not known for my like fashion forward approach all the time. But um, Yes, you are. But thank to you. To me, at least. Thank you. But like, um, Melissa Villasenor would come in in these like bell bottom pants and like boots, like, like, old boots and like sweaters and hoodies and I kind of was like I'm not saying you can't dress like this but I just want to understand why no you're a star Uh-oh. and I'm gonna need you to start acting like one not on my shows I'm not but regret- what if she thinks that that's what a star dresses that, like well, that's fine she'll be a star regardless but I was like I just want you to you're I just want you to know you're a star and the things like sometimes people just need permission to go oh yeah I don't have to minimize myself yeah if you're not minimizing yourself I get it. that's fine I see you as a star and like I just want you to make sure that you know that you know that you can speak that you are perceived that way you'll still get everything you want I know that when I when I was in my 20s I thought you have to wear a hoodie and a backpack and like no makeup and yes. denuder yourself and like oh you I have love to, like, that version of you it's so like, not threatening <laughs> I was, I was I mean, going still for that it. figure, but that's, that's, and, that's, and just the face that doesn't need makeup but and the hair. And it didn't work. It yeah, didn't it make it people like me. You're, you're, I'm you're just super. like, oh my god, I'm so amazing. I have to no, hide No, then myself. it was like, oh, Whitney's what? trying to be a boy. It's like there's always too much. Yeah, I, then what you if get, I was transitioning? Every, you homophobe, exactly, transphobes. Every, it's just you can't win. But I, I do love that. Like I see you as a like just telling your friend. Like just by the way, like. You, you, you're, you're, a star. you're a star. And sometimes you just need permission from someone else. Like, and Catherine Ryan is who I got it from by totally by accident. We were doing, it's a, such an embarrassing story. I love Catherine Ryan. No, dude, she was, I was hosting a gala at Montreal and she was uh, um, uh, on it and she wears these like super hyper feminine like doll dresses and they're so fun. And then she tells these like, you know, super smart, filthy jokes. And she, uh, there was my whatever passive aggressive, like fucking black all saints, like, you know, overpriced t-shirt. And, uh, and the whoever it was, the AD or whoever was like, pull out this like yellow, like snow white dress and was like, is this yours? And I was like, no, I would never wear that on stage. And Catherine was in makeup right next to me. She told me the story way later. <laughs> and we talked about it on IG Live one day because I was like so mortified. But it was, I was like, I, I didn't feel like I could ever do that. I'm like, I could never wear, I can't be feminine on stage. I'm not I can't allowed, be sexy. I'm not allowed to wear dresses. Like, that's not for me. Like, no, I, no. I, no one would take me seriously. That was all my shit. I the was worried. The shit is Catherine Ryan going, I'm going to dress like a fucking doll and have makeup on and glitter and I'm still fucking funny. I was bitch. worried that's, coming in here that this was too low cut and you were going to go, gorgeous. we're not doing sexy today because I think you did that to me one time. <laughs> You go no more sexy for like for you like let's and I and and I and that I made might me feel have like, been on edibles. <laughs> no, to, like it, it regardless, it, it it was just your opinion, and you could have been right, but I was like, I, I this is embarrassing to admit, and I don't want you to feel like the, I feel weird around you or anything. But today I was like, no matter what Whitney tries to give you in terms of like a new wardrobe, you're just stick this. at like you want to you feel good in this. This is what you decided, and you're gonna wear this, even though. I, all the free clothes you gave me, I've been wearing constantly, and I do. If you have anything to give me, I would like I to go through them do today because it's and it's a very sexy thing. But you that, were, but, but I when I walked in today, all of that went away the second I saw you, and it always does because uh, I, I'm I'm just saying like 
the fa- I didn't even plan on telling you that, but the fact that I can makes me feel like that's something I, I can't believe I'm saying it on air. But oh, we'll cut it. I out. would be like really nervous to tell you that in person, but you have to be able to tell your friends when you're scared of them. No, no, and I'm scared of you impo- sometimes. And it's important to say that I'm scared of me sometimes, uh, uh, which is weird because my only goal is to protect you and make you safe. And sometimes I, know, I come off scared. But I know that now. But to me- I trust. And I'll say, I'm going to blame the victim here. I don't believe women. Um, if you, when you came in last time, I think I remember, unless I'm dysmorphic and misremembering, I think I remember you coming in and being like, oh, I don't like, I don't know if I should wear this or this. Yes, no, I was insecure and you were and helping in those me. those moments, yes. I just want someone to tell me what to do. And I've been in situations on sets with actresses. They're like, should I wear this or this? And I get I'm like, it. which one makes you happier? And they're like, eh. And they just want someone to go, the blue one. No, because I think you saw me in several things struggling because I would get dressed up in these sexy things and I wouldn't be as comfortable. You you know, you can was, see it in my early stand-up sets. I'm like wearing these tiny dresses and heels. Like, is this what I'm supposed to wear? And now when I dress sexy, I sometimes feel guilt. Like, oh, sexy equals uncomfortable. Nikki, why would you make yourself uncomfortable so men like you or people like you? But, but now I realize, like, it, I haven't had sex in two years. I'm not trying to fucking fuck anyone I'm, this is not me trying so to be on, like you're also boys like, like me I just there's feel a flaw, sexy there's and I feel a good flaw, there's the flaw in this this uh, the self-limiting belief that I hear is you don't think you're sexy unless you're showing skin no I, d- I definitely you know, uh, no, do but you know I just think I look fucking great in this shirt with this color like I like taking risks with my stand up with uh, why not take risks with fashion why not express myself I've never allowed myself to do that because I'm so worried that someone might think that I'm trying to be sexy God for God fucking for... bid as a single woman I try to when I'm on TV remind men that I'm a sexual being so that I don't ke- keep getting slides that say you're the goat or giving women watching you permission to be sexy themselves. Yes. It's not just for men. It is our job as comedians to, to take risks and do crazy shit. Yeah. And we are, can I tell you, we are first and foremost, we are fucking entertainers. It's Is it entertaining or not? Are you not entertained? Yes. Like, it is my I job. Be, I don't need just a microphone and my thoughts. No, like, it is our I job. can be other It is things. our job to surprise people. It is our job to take risks, be wild, have people go, holy shit. We are like, people live vicarious to us. It is our job to be like the emotional skydivers to take crazy risks. Like, Benton has really helped me with this because I was like, I can't wear makeup. I can't wear eyeliner. He's like, why the fuck not? Yes. Like, my hero yes. is, is uh, someone named Joan Rivers who wore gowns on stage and fucking gold hats, makeup all over the fucking place. And we're like, we all just need to dress like the the, the comedians that do shitty rape jokes that are featuring and can't, that com- are, com- why? It didn't work for you. Yeah. Well, it didn't work for you. My God, I love this. That's why I... I and by the way, there's so few female comedians to compare us to that <laughs> were like... We're trail, <gasps> still well, trailblazing. Said, like, Sarah Silverman wasn't the... Like, we're allowed to not do exact... Like, what she did was perfect for her, and that's who she is. But I was always like, oh, you just have to dress this way. That's the only yes. thing I had to look to. Yes. It was I'm like, where I do I to. get that fucking backpack she always has that is so cute? Like, yeah. I, there's, I tried but to... that's how her, she is to, on and off stage. It's and what she wants to wear. All the time. I sometimes but don't know what, what I want to wear. Guess what? She also, I remember one time seeing her at the something. There's a lot of times when we were on that all ball tour and stuff doing those like arenas, she would wear fishnet tights with fucking like jean so cutoffs. Sexy. Yes. With, with, that but girl. as soon as it's a dress, it's and when you're it's, trying to be sexy. Yes. But if I wear jean shorts and, and fishnets, like I, I get to be the cool girl because it's shorts. Like none of it even makes any sense. I, I, I'm so over it. And like as long as I feel comfortable, if I, if my, if my nipples are showing, I'm not wearing a bra and I was I like, my it. nipples might come through. I'm like, I do, it's not because I'm like trying to get something. It's just my fucking, but I just don't But let care. me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You're not trying to get something because you already have it. You already have it all. You can fucking date guys. You, there's These no, are actually fake nipples. You no, are, are they? <laughs> no. <laughs> but also one more thing. To me, the only thing I ascertain when I was like, let's not do sexy. Day, or by that, I mean anything that's going to make you think you about it while you're on camera. No. Taylor Swift, I, I've dra- named her for someone. I, she's, uh, my obsession with her it knows no bounds. It's <laughs> really, really not. It's, I, I have finally accepted about myself and I'm getting honest about it. And you like, I want to be more. Are... Really, Emily? Same page. Wait, you guys are Swifties too? I was just saying I don't have any Swifty friends. I need more. Oh, like Benton, I have communities online that they, I, Benton like gets the merch. Like it me too. Anyone. I like, like what I know about Taylor Swift is like why I love this person so much. I think there's no one's ever spoken to me in in, in a way that this artist has. She gets to wear glitzy glam. She gets I love to that you're like, and I was on the phone with Taylor Swift the other day. I wasn't. No, I'm not <laughs> friends with her. I don't want to know. I don't want to know her. It, it, it's, uh, the expectations are too high. And she, if, if, if she as much as like, I think she rolled her eyes at me or like, if I think that I've upset her in any way, I won't be able to listen to her music. And I literally could die because that's how much her music means to me emotionally. Like it helps me. 
it helps my depression. It helps my anxiety. Like, I need her in a way that, like, it feels weird saying that of an artist. Like, I watched Billy Eilish's documentary, and I remember, like, girls being like, you saved my life, Billy. And I'm just like, easy. When, But I really, then I go, oh, my God, Taylor Swift just literally saved my life. I remember, someone That's goes, what if she dies? And I literally was that. like, if... Taylor Swift, Who asked if you something, that? like they're like, what, 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 like they said, they were like, what if something happens to her? There was some kind of joke of like, man, let's, and I go, I don't know what I do. I honestly, I'm so grateful that I have such a catalog to, to like, but I'm stealing myself for a, t like when her, it was released that Red was going to be re coming out November 19th. I was like, survive until November. Like I literally said that to myself. I'm like, you have to be like, watch, cross the street better because it just means, it, I picked the best artist to love, by the way, because she's so more prolific than any other artist. And it's not because she wants a lot of attention. It's because she's a genius and yeah. can't stop writing. She's like Lennon McCartney, levels yeah. of genius. And anyone who wants to argue about, and I'm a huge Beatles fan, grew up with the Beatles. Taylor Swift, it, it, you don't need to argue for Taylor Swift being the one of the greatest artists of all time. Not, not possibly, I, I would say the best artist of all time. Best songwriter, best performer, best... Uh, to her fans, I'm learning so much about from her, studying her of how to uh, connect with your fans because I'm like, why do I feel like this person's my sister and no. I don't know her? And no. it's because she has done the work. Yeah. She's been calculated yeah, enough she knows, to make her fans feel loved in a real genuine knows, way. She knows, she knows that it's all about the fans. But I am like, now my tour, I'm like, I want to make it like, a Taylor Swift concert. Like, I want my fans to, like, have I will be playing Taylor prizes. Swift the entire time and lip-syncing it. <laughs> I, 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 I want to have way. dancing. I want to have lights. I want to have beautiful sets that evoke whatever kind of imagery I want. I want to have prizes. I want to have confetti. Mm -hmm. or I want something tangible that, that people can take with them. I want a fan experience. I want... I want... To, why does stand-up have to be a microphone and a fucking curtain? I want music cues. When I did the um, MTV Awards, I got to, like do a monologue which was just stand up but then I was like oh it would be funny if there was like a light cue for this and I was yeah. like why have I never thought to put light cues in stand up it makes it funny here's what I'll say because <laughs> everyone's gonna fuck it up just th that's I understand that you I'm getting to, headsets for to, my tour I'm like to, it's gonna to cost thousands with, of dollars you have to move with to your yeah you are gonna lose money on the store but like my new the tour I'm doing in the fall is called the touch me tour because I did start to after shows I always take pictures I from stage I love that you did that but then also when I run out now I always will just run I don't run out the, like with the, I'd like just run through the audience and like yep. sit on their laps and like and like crowd surf to the stage and I just was like I just like doing this it makes me I like to like see I'm worried for your meet and greets with the touch me tour though yeah it's it's well I kind of do it like from the bit. stage and I come out it's gonna okay. be fine it's yeah, gonna yeah. be fine everyone's fine um, I'll have a hologram or whatever um, and uh, and I might my robot it might be my robot something like that but mine's called I renamed my the don't touch me tour <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going piggybacking <laughs> off of yours. And it's it's also honest, but I will not be going out in the crowd and mean No, that. no, no. I love touching no, fans. No, you should be that. I touch myself to her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's true. Um, but no, I love touching fans. People are always like, you don't want a picture. I'm like, no, just post it, if please. If they Stop paid money to come see me, them. I already trust them. I know, me I just too. Do. If, you're, if you fuck with me, I fuck with your choices. That's why I call my... Yeah. I, there are a lot of comedians that are like that, and and when people like security guards that are with me, they're like, I can't believe you like hug your fans and stuff. I'm like, what are you talking about? They're oh my god, I get the in fact there. that people go to perform in front of their fans, like get away from me, no, no, like, like no, you what? bring them you in. You hate your fans. Bring I'm like, so anyone that like bought my book or listens to my book or is wearing the merch, I didn't I'm like, used to like my fans until I got honest because now uh, they used to not like the person. They used to like yeah. the presentation, the Sarah Silverman impression I was doing on stage, and this is like not until the past probably like seven or eight years that I'm like and now I don't lie on I'm so if you like me now I I'm let's, obsessed with you you're my best that's why I call my podcast listeners my besties and it's like and I because trust your choices I talk to them I really do trust them like a best friend and I feel seen like them and I feel like they can forgive me like a best friend I can make mistakes I can that's have a, right. my podcast I do it four days a week I, yesterday I was having a very anxious day because I had a, a, a shoot to do where I was going to see someone that was very triggering and I was freaking I was on my podcast I was like that and that's fucked up that I was like so angry and I go guys I'm having a really bad day and I can't tell you about it because it's not something I will tell you about it when I'm ready but I I'm a bitch today and I was rude there's been days when I've been so like the Relatable. worst person and and it's embarrassing. I'm I go like skip today's podcast. I'll literally tell them and I'll go uh, and then I issue a statement the next morning being like I was a bitch yesterday because but they're my friends. Right. They'll but forgive me. But what you're doing, but what you're doing, and if they don't, bye. But this is what you're showing exactly. What, and you would never fuck with me anyway if it was only under the conditions that I was perfect all the time. Yes. Um. But also, you uh, what you're doing is you're also giving people 
being of service is part of the reason that like when famous people are like, I can't go to 12 step meetings, I'm famous. I'm like, no, bitch, you have to go even harder because, because you're so selfish. Because no, someone in that meeting is going to go, I was going to fucking walk out of here. I, did, I don't have time for this. However, if this guy is here, if this guy is here, yes. But when you, when you have a problem like that, like I'm really angry and I'm just taking it on the wrong thing. It's like, oh, even someone in therapy, even someone who's like really successful, like so even, it oh, happens that's to all them too. I wanted when I was in high school was for Jennifer Aniston to tell me that she kind of hated herself too. Oh, what? Oh, you thought I would be friends with you? Oh, 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 well, all right. That is so oh. fucking funny. Oh. <laughs> just do this a lot. Oh, and just. And the more she messes up her hair, the better it looks. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it always. I mean, like that hair. Her uh, hairline is fucking amazing. Oh, the um, what's it called? Living proof. Living proof. I just got that. Yeah, the leave, I just... the leave in conditioner is fucking oh, amazing. Really? And I know her, so I I don't even tell her that I use it. And I have the dry shampoo in my bag. And when I go I to do... her house, I take it out of my bag because I don't want her to think I'm. I I literally yeah. use it because it's a fucking. Other hairstylists use it on me. Yes, yes. I just so got it too. And I, I felt like, are you buying I'm this because like, of Anderson? I'm like, yeah, I am. Because I also, but see, I, I'll do anything I do she it does. because I like it. And then I pretend I don't use it because I don't want her to think that I'm like, oh, big fan. Like, I'm just like, this right. just is a fucking good product. And I don't want you to think I use it. Like, oh, why, why do I not, like, why do I want, like, like that is weird when. Yeah, that, like, that would be a compliment to her. Yeah, that you she's, have she, the she, thing. By the way, and she's like, she, we're, we've been friends for a long time. It's like, she's not all of a sudden be like, ooh, Whitney's a fan. Like, uh, it's I, just... I'm insulting her by thinking she would see Oh, no, up. I wouldn't think that. Oh, <laughs> Whit. Oh, uh, no, that's, you can have a bottle. We have some in the, uh, take some. I don't care. Who wants a cocktail? I just, see, I just like can't wait for her to offer me a margarita. I'll be like, I'll fall off the wagon for you, bitch. Let's do it. That is so Go to Casa Vega. Genius. I don't know. Do you still go there? That was, there, like, that's a, really that funny was a rumor thing. of like the, 15 years the ago. The idea of that, that so, this is so something I would do, that you're sober except for one person. Yeah. So I, so I'm if totally I had the sober. whole pass. I don't drink, but only with this one person I have margaritas because I don't, I want them to think we're like, and then anywhere else. Oh I'm, my God. <laughs> I'm going to do that. Idea. Aniston, that's mine. That to me is more codependence relapse than alcohol relapse. <laughs> that's not an alcohol yeah. relapse. That's a codependent relapse. Different. Yeah. Uh, I, I honestly might make that exception. I'd probably do anything she tells me to do. <laughs> You've won this podcast. Um, it is your show now. <laughs> I l love it. And I'm so frustrated that we have to stop. I mean, this is crazy how long this has been. It's time. Not really. We've been talking off camera for about two hours. Okay. That's no. not too And long. I do have this ability to make two hours feel like six hours. It it's a gift. No. <laughs> That six hour one. I just went through it. Dick, dick, dick. What are they talking about there? Dick, dick, dick. That was insane. I want to talk to you about so many things. I love you. And you know that I. I so many. Yes! yes. And you know that I end these awkwardly. My podcast is the Nikki Laser podcast. And I just want to say about that is like, just like your podcast, just jump in. I think a lot of people like don't like do podcasts because they go, oh, there, this is episode 137. I got to listen. It's like, yeah. just you'll catch up to all yeah, the inside yeah, jokes. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can go back to good ones where, where, like, where you like the description. Just jump in tomorrow and join yes. us. Subscribe yes. and then unsubscribe if you don't like it. It's okay. Let's go. I love you madly. I love you. Don't ride elephants. Um, listen to this show. Uh, I'm obsessed with you. I'm obsessed with you. F-Boy Island. Oh, yeah. F when does it come out? Uh, end of July. Fuck, we didn't even get to talk about F boys. Don't, do, oh no, next time.